Why aren't you listening to me? Doesn't anybody ever listen to me? Listen to me? Listen to me? Listen to me? Blame yourselves for this fucking word salad that I just spit all over the goddamn place. This is all your fault. You and I like to. That's it. I like to. I work under the cover of darkness because I don't need the rest of society to look in my eyes and know that is a bad person. Hey, what's happening? Mike Schmidt, 40 year old boy podcast. Lily's laughing because I just told her I once got laid from a game of chicken. Uh, one of those things where it was like, uh, you know, hand on thigh, hand here. It's like, well, he'll never do that. Well, she'll never do that. And then the next thing you know, I'm, you know, I got my hand in somebody's hair, uh, <laughs> ruining a marriage, uh, not my own, uh, yet. Uh, hi, Mike Schmidt, 40 year old boy podcast. As I mentioned, uh, hold on, Lily. You all right? Uh, that's our friend, Lily Von Stupp over there. She's about to die, uh, choked to death apparently because I've just told her something that she didn't want to hear. Uh, folks, I, I just, uh, again, it's late. It's, it's Wednesday at least. I've gotten that straightened out. Um, and uh <laughs> but it's late it's six o'clock again i hate doing a late show i tried to get her on time i i, I plan on being here between two and three or no three and four and then uh woke up about two thirty, and then uh had to, i wound up uh, email stuff that i'll get to later uh and then wind up in the car and dude there was traffic on the way to lily's house today there's never been traffic here that's uh, retarded um but I, I so anyway i i get here and i'm on the phone uh fo- folks Look, don't have a family. All right, that's what I'm going to tell you right now. Don't ever have a family. <laughs> Your own. I, I, I seriously, do, let them go. Just uh, treat them as people that you sort of know. I mean, don't don't. <laughs> there's nothing you can do to fix them. There's nothing you can do to save them. You can't. Even even though you want to, you want to get involved and you want to go ahead and reach out and and take care. And look, I recognize <laughs> after last week's show, the last fucking thing anybody wants to hear about is my goddamn family. <laughs> All right, because this is going to turn into like the sequel. It's like, hey, remember that story from last week? This is the fucking fallout from that. And fallout is a great word, by the way, because they always say nuclear family. Yeah, because you got the fallout for the next 200 fucking years. Fuck me. I got four brothers. I talked to one of them. One of them. Uh, And it's not the one I thought it would be. You know what I mean? Like in my head, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll talk to this guy all the time. No, he's the, now he's the problem. He's now the, the one that, that has become the, the complete and utter uh, project for all of us. Like uh, he, his his problems are so bad. I'm talking to another brother that I hadn't talked to in fucking four years. <laughs> That's how bad my other brother has turned out. I've actually I've actually had my other my younger brother who I've never spoken. You know, I haven't spoken to him in four years. Turn to me to find out what the fuck we should do about this other brother. Mother fuck. I, I, I don't know what to do. Because you know what? I'm 43. I'm going to be 44. Uh, and, and the brother I'm talking to tonight is, uh, he's 38. You know what I mean? And, and we're having this conversation like like I'm fucking 11 and he's 6. I mean, it's like, dude. <laughs> God damn it. You know, because the, there's nothing he can do. You have to, there's that, God damn, I hate that speech. I hate that speech where you have to go, there's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do but wait for him to die. I mean, honestly, that's that's what's happening. You're, you're, he's he's either going to fix it or he's not. We've done everything that we possibly can. Quit making your life uh, worse by trying to make his better. You can't fix it. You can't change it. Mother of God, I, I don't understand it. I don't get it. Because you tell a guy, I, you know, a, a year ago, I've alluded to this, all right? I, I, my brother was fucking, he hit the wall. I, and, and not literally, but he's about to hit the fucking wall, literally, because he can't, he, he won't fucking snap out of it. He's been in this death and shame spiral for fucking three years, and you, you try to grab him. You, you, you keep, and he keeps going by, and it's like, it's like trying to grab somebody on a merry-go-round. Because they go by and you reach and you miss them, but you know, fuck, inevitably they're going to come back around again and I get another shot at this. But eventually you got to fucking walk away from the merry-go-round and let them keep going in the circle they've decided to go in. You can't fix it. You can't change it. So I had that conversation in my fucking car. <laughs> Thank God traffic was bad because I had to, you know, decide that I'm never going to talk to my brother again. I, had, I, needed, I needed 18 minutes to go ahead and ponder that motherfucking uh, quandary. Uh, my brother's in a homeless shelter. 
my brother is on the street. And I knew he would be. And I told him a, a year and a half ago, l- the last time I dealt with this brother, I told him, I go, look, come out here. I will help you if you come here. I had to clear it with Karen, of course. But I said, come out here. We will fix this. We can fix this. You just need to fucking. But he's got this weird bullshit pride thing happening where he's like that stupid shit. Like, dude, I can't call Uncle John. I owe him four dollars. Are you fucking joking? (laughs) It's your uncle. Call him. He loves you. He loves us. He's going to shine the four bucks. Guess what? He's going to go ahead and go, hey, you know what? That's my nephew. Four dollars is not. You do really think you're going to call him and go, hey, I'm not fucking talking to you. Where's my four George Washington's ass hat? Wind up in a fucking homeless shelter. See if I care. No, we care. But we can't care if you don't fucking care. Quit stealing Oxycontin from people and snap the fuck out of it. All right. He doesn't listen. So, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, I can't, you know, there's, it's just fucking insane, insane where you again, and, and he's been chasing this thing for the longest time. He's supposed to get a settlement. Uh, uh, he's become that guy. I hate. He's become that guy who's like, who always rides a bike and, and, and wants that, you know, he's a 40 year old man on a bike. Who's telling you that he's got a settlement coming. You know what I mean? Those guys, <laughs> holy shit. Quit living out of a pizza box and get a hold of your fucking life. You're going to be 40 this year. And listen, if I'm telling you to get a hold of your fucking life, how badly have you fucked up? How badly have you gone off the cliff if I'm the one taking a stand and telling you you got to straighten shit out? Because, again, my dad was a drunk and he died. And then the rest of us all picked up something. You know what I mean? Some of us drink. Some of us fucking smoke. Some of us apparently decided to crawl into a small amber bottle and disappear for the next fucking five years. And some of us just can't stop fucking eating. All right? But you know what? You got to recognize that. You got to look in the mirror and go, fuck, man, I, I got to I'm not Rush Limbaugh. I got to stop taking these fucking drugs. The fuck is wrong with me? I got a family to worry about. But that's the thing is he doesn't. He, don't worry about us. Do it for yourself. Do it for your fucking self because he's the smart one. He's the one we always thought was going to make it like. And it was funny. I was talking to my little brother today on the phone. I go, look, I don't mean any slight to you at all. I go, but, uh, you know, we I always thought Andy was the smart one who was going to make it. He was the one who was going to be the breakout guy, and we were all happy. He, you know, he joined the Navy. He was going to go to college. He was going to be a teacher and a football coach. Boom, we're rooting for that motherfucker. And I, you know, because I, I, what do I do? I do nothing. I'm a fuck up. I get that. I own it. I accept it, and I'm doing whatever I can to spin. I'm, I'm like the Rapunzel of the, of the family. I've got a bunch of fucking shit straw that's all my fault, and I'm trying to weave it into a gold blanket. Is that what Rapunzel did? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> I don't fucking know. He lived in a tower, right? Is he even a he? No, that's a chick, right? Rapunzel's a chick with long ass hair. That's me. <laughs> that's who I am. Fucking Rapunzel. Jesus Christ. Rumpelstiltskin. Who's, he's no. He slept forever. But he's the one that had the thing that turned. The loom gold. that turned straw into gold. All right. Well, that's who I am. I might be Rapunzel. Who cares? I'll be one of them. Who the fuck cares? Doesn't matter. I'm not in a homeless shelter, so it doesn't matter what fucking mythical creature I, I am. Jesus Christ, I could be the cat in the fucking hat. At least I'm not, I got my own bed. <laughs> Motherfuck. So I said to my little brother, I go, look, I don't mean any slight to you, man. But, uh, you know, I always thought Andy was going to be the one who made it. And he's like, me too. Like, it was like, <laughs> I was so happy to have him say it. Because it's like, I don't, you know, I don't trust myself as far as I can spit. And I and my little brother, fuck him. But I mean, all of us is just, we've all got that weird thing holding us back. Every single one of us, you know, we're all in the gate. You know, that we heard the fucking trumpet, but and we might have fought against the fucking bit, but we still got into the gate, but then the gate opened and none of us ran. <laughs> Not one of us left the fucking gate. We're waiting for this race to start. And you know what? The stands have emptied. People have ripped up their tickets because the people they bet on have failed. There's not a win, a place, or a show in the bunch because we haven't even left the goddamn gate in the race of fucking life. Me and my four brothers just turn around and look at one another like, you're going to go? I'm not going to go. You're going to fucking go? So we just sit there in the gate waiting for the fucking race to start. One of us smoking dope. We're like the seven Chinese brothers. We're We're the fat five Irish brothers. And instead of drinking up the entire fucking lake, I eat all the candy in the lake. My brother smokes all the dope in the country. The other one fucking he he sneaks in in the night and he like a like a fucking satyr and he steals your oxycontin, and then calls from a homeless shelter with like, dude, I just got to talk to somebody sane. Well, you know what? Why are you in the fucking homeless shelter? We told you not to do this. Fucking year ago, we told you not to do this, motherfucker. What is wrong with you? 
That bullshit facade of he lies right to your fucking face. He lies right on the phone. He lies about, and he comes off, you know what? On the phone, he's Andy. He does a great job of being Andy on the phone, but then you fucking hang up and you hear all this other bullshit about him. You're like, God damn it. What the fuck? Why am I falling for it? I can't fall for it anymore. And I can't. I can't. I can't help myself. How the fuck can I help him? So I'm in the car, I'm talking to my little brother, and we reconnected. I mean, the, the, the fucking shithole that my little brother has fallen into, my other younger brother, because again, they're all younger than me, except one. <laughs> There's no point in going into him. Uh, but like, uh, you know, Andy and Scott, are my, they're my younger, the, the two youngest. And, uh, and it's funny, I always talk about, you know, Lenny and I are kind of, uh, you know, oil and a gun. Uh, <laughs> fuck water. We, we went right past it. Uh, but, but Andy and Scott are kind of the same deal. But they, however never recognized it i just severed the relationship with letty i was like fuck this isn't working and you know we had a thing that happened now i'll tell you about that someday but uh (laughs) um but uh, the the other guys like andy and scott they've they have the same type of relationship but they keep moving in together it's like dudes (laughs) don't you understand it's like if you had two fucking wombats and they hated one another and you kept putting them in a goddamn fish tank and they're just like dude why are you putting me with this wombat i hate well, you know what? Why don't I have a job. Maybe I'll help the wombat with some cigarettes. And then they buy cigarettes for the wombat for six months, and the other wombat wants to fucking murder him in his sleep because they're confined in a goddamn fish tank staring at one another. Wombats hate fish tanks. You know what they like, though? Oxy. And they'll fucking steal it from you. My brother shows up at my other brother's house, and I, I don't know how he's still getting scripts. I have no fucking idea how he's still getting, because he, look, my brother got all fucked up, all right? He had an injury, and uh, and it changed everything, all right? You know, I, and I, look, I, I'm not Chevy Chase, all right? I don't know what a fucking debilitating back injury does to you. It's ba- I, I told you, I got a bad foot, and I complained about it for 19 minutes. <laughs> yeah, so the fuck am I to complain? But I'm also the guy who, you know, I, I wouldn't take pain pills when I get home from the hospital. I never, I don't touch him. I don't, I don't. Because it's just stupid. It, to me, it doesn't fix anything. It just masks it, and then you wind up fucking, you wear that mask forever. And then you're in a homeless shelter in Carbondale, Illinois, reaching out, saying, I need to talk to a sane person because the woman next to me has five kids and is pregnant, and I don't want to sleep because they're going through my shit. Well, then get the fuck out of there. Jesus. I, when my, my brother called me yesterday. I go, I, I, and uh, I, he never talks to me, and he's like, yeah, I want to touch base. I, I thought Andy was dead. I mean, I did. I just went, yeah, that's happening. Andy's dead. And uh, because it's and, and isn't it a fucking terrible statement that it wouldn't surprise me at all? Like, I mean, that's the mindset I'm at now. I, it would not fucking shock me at all if my brother told me my brother was dead. It'd break my fucking heart and there'd be nothing I could do about it. But you know what? There's nothing I can do about it now. I can't I can't fucking fix it. Over a year ago, I offered him to come out here. I said, stay with me. And uh, I said, we'll, we'll get through this. We'll figure it out. Because, again, he's chasing a settlement. He's chasing this thing that's never going to come. Last time I talked to him, he had he had the be all end all of doctor appointments. And so he needed money. And uh, look, uh, you know, I talk to you guys here. You know that I'm not exactly flush at this point in time. It's coming. Certainly, we all recognize the fact that I'm going to get a windfall at some point, And hey, then I'll be able to buy you all the Oxycontin and fucking rides you want. Uh, but at the time, I told my brother, I go, what do you need? And he's like, I need to get because he had, he had no car. He's living at my brother's house, just smoking and sitting on the couch, wearing an ass groove into his couch and and just, you know, tension and fighting and hatred. And he's like, look, I just got to see this one doctor. Once I see this doctor, he approves me. And then the settlement comes through and everything fucking rocks. And I go, listen to me. You're telling me for sure that that's the case. He goes, yeah. I said, all right. I will get you a car. I'll get a town car to pick you up. And it had to drive him like 35 miles to this doctor. And I said, and I'll get you a round trip. I'll pay. But I said, I can't send you money, but I'll pay for the car. And, uh, and then I called looking for a town car. And it was like $165 or something. So I got him a cab. And, uh, and I called the guy. And it was a nice cab. And it was like, uh, they charged me 85 bucks. So, uh, so I paid for it. And, and Andy's like, all right, great. You know, they'll pick me up and they'll take me to the doctor. And... Uh, and then I, I didn't hear from him. I have no idea if he went to the doctor, if he met the appointment. I paid the cab company. I don't even know if they sent a cab. They might not have. I have no fucking idea what happened. The, the cab driver might have shown up and Andy and he might have done a handful of oxy and gone and had a sandwich. I have no fucking clue what happened. Uh, all I know is I tried my best to do one last thing to help him because he assured me that that was the one thing he definitely needed. And then the next thing I know, he's moving to Chicago to live with a guy who was his drug connection. I'm like, that's not going to be good. Do you understand that? 
Don't you see the ill logic in this decision? Well, I have nowhere else to go. Fuck, come here. I don't care. I will fucking help you if you come here. But when you come here, you're not going to like it because I'm going to make you do a bunch of shit you don't want to do. Of course, if you want to be the drug connection and you get into him, maybe he's going to wind up making you a bunch of shit you don't want to do. You ever see Less Than Zero, pal? That's all I fucking need is my little brother who's getting, you know, can't he fucking stand up straight having to blow guys for fucking Oxycontin. Jesus, fuck. Then I got to get involved and hurt somebody because I'm not Andrew McCarthy. I won't just show up and go, hey, Rip, I'm taking Robert and we're taking a ride. Fuck that. Rip gets a shotgun blast to the face. I might not talk to my brother, but it doesn't mean you could fucking pimp him out. Who the fuck do you think you are? Guy in the city. Now I'm fucking mad. Never met this guy. I don't know what's happening. Oh, man. Oh, Christ. So I'm on the phone with that shit downstairs. That's what I'm dealing with today. That's what I walked right into, like a goddamn dysfunctional pie in the face. How do you fix it? You can't. You can't. Like I said, the good thing is I'm back talking to my little brother. So, you know, I wound up, I said my apologies to him and he apologized to me. And I guess we're cool. I don't know. (laughs) Until the next phone call. Until the next thing that happens that changes the whole fucking thing around. You know what's funny is he's talking to me, and I haven't talked to him in forever. I talked to him last time I talked to him was when I talked to Andy because he called me, going, "Dude, I'm going to murder him if something doesn't fucking change." So uh, that was I. That was the first time I talked to him in three years. So uh, he's on the phone with me today. We're having a long conversation, and I'm telling him he's like, "How you doing?" I'm telling him about Seattle and the show's coming up, and that the podcast is happening. He's like, "Yeah." He goes, "I love your website," and uh, he goes, "I don't listen to the show." He's not on Facebook. He doesn't do any of that stuff. And uh, he's like, "Maybe I'll give your show a listen." <laughs> this is going to be the show he listens to. He's going to hear that he and I had a fucking long conversation about my oxy-addicted brother. He's going to be like, oh, no. And it's not oxy, it's Vicodin. Because I was, he corrected me. He goes, dude, he's not an oxy, he's on Vicodin. And I'm like, isn't it the same fucking shit? It's not the same shit? Might as well be as far as I'm concerned. Well, all right, let's put it this way. If you're taking 18 Vicodin at a time, does that uh, affect you the way oxy would? Because I just heard that. He's like, yeah, dude. He goes, he showed up at my house a week ago, and I was trying to help him out, and he had a, he had, he had a, a script, and uh, he had 125 pills in the script. Uh, it was gone in four days. And I said, and my brother's like, I said, what? And he goes, yeah. He goes, I took the pills and counted them. And uh, he goes, he took he took nine in one hour, and then he took nine like later on, whatever the fuck. And I'm like, yeah, everything. Yes. Well, the good news is he's in a homeless shelter, so he can just you know stay laying down in a cot while it happens. That's the thing. I can't fucking fix this. I don't know what the fuck to do. You know, he's got to fucking grab himself by his Vicodin-soaked bootstraps and fucking make himself fixed. I don't know how to do it. I don't. Fuck, I can't even straighten my own shit out. I got shit I can't tell you about. Man, oh, fucking man. All right. Yeah, uh, enjoy that. I, cause, and it's so funny, after last week's show, I'm like, be lighthearted this week, dude. You know, go ahead. Because <laughs> last week, I, 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 there's, a, there's a nation out there that wants to hug me. I mean, it was like everybody wrote me, which is nice, and that's very cool, and thank you so much. But I felt, then I'm like, because I'll tell you this, too, it pissed me off, all right? Uh, I listen to the show, because I, every time Lily uploads it, I have to scan through it to make sure it's, it's, the breaks are done right, or because then I'll call her if anything's wrong. Um, so then I listened to the middle and I listened to the part of, of you know, a story and uh, I was so angry at you, but for not, for no reason, it's not your fault. Uh, cause I sniffle in the story like twice. You can hear it. It's evident. And I'm like, why wouldn't you cut that out? Because it, it sounded so, I was telling Max about it the next day. I go, I go, how awful is that? He goes, I didn't even really notice it. I go, I go, dude, cause it's not literally, it sounds so oppressively in your face to me. I might as well be William Hurt in broadcast news putting saline in his eyes to, to empathize with the story because it, it sounded like manipulative and weird, like I was coaching people to feel with me. I, I Look, it, and you're shaking your head, and I get it. I didn't mean it that way, and everybody knows I didn't mean it that way, and nobody took it that way. Nobody wrote me and said, hey, nice fake job, which would have been awful. Uh, but it still, it didn't matter. When I heard it in my head, I went, because I'm stupid. All right, I'm a stupid person, folks. Uh, <laughs> I just got an email from uh, from Bruce. It tweaked. All right, here, here's how I read because Max is always making fun of me, and he's like, "Dude, uh, you read emails with this. I don't know who's in your head reading the emails." And I've talked about this on the show uh, because uh, every email to me is like is is an, is angry. Like everybody's writing me in this weird like they want to fight tone, even though they're not. But that's just what lives in my head. Um, I'll tell you guys this: it, it, we had a deal with Tweaked earlier in the year where if you donated forty dollars to the show you were to get uh, a free set of tweaked audio earbuds. 
and uh, and it was worked out great with them. And uh, I actually have a new deal with them, and I'll tell you about that. Uh, that's tweakedaudio.com slash 40. I don't know if you guys are aware of that. They uh, they have earbuds, and uh, and they like our show, <laughs> and they sell <laughs> cock ring watches. Um, so... So he wrote me an email because the deal was there was a certain number of people. And once it, be, it was over a certain number, I had to cut them 10 bucks back. OK. Uh, and I don't even know if I should be saying this. This is so stupid. But uh, so that was the deal. And, and he was like, yeah, we'll, we'll go up to a certain number. We'll match whatever with the earbuds. And, but then after we get over a certain number, you'll, you know, it was, and it was a high number. So it was like, are we going to get that? We don't even know if we're going to get that. But then we did. Like you guys were rallied and surpassed and it was really cool. So I owed them a certain amount of money. And, uh, and I didn't, I didn't really think about it. You know what I mean? It just, it wasn't like I was invoiced or anything. Nothing happened. So, uh, I get an email yesterday and he's like, Hey, uh, just a reminder that, you know, we had that deal and you do, uh, you owe us this amount of money, but we want to go ahead and just shine it and make it a donation to the show. So go ahead and keep that. That'd be great. And we'd like to do another deal with you, uh, starting now, if you want to do it for the month of July for tweakedaudio.com slash 40. And, uh, when I read it, I read it as where's our money (laughs) and and i just did because that's unfortunately that's where my head lives you know what i mean that's where my brain is at it's like i read them saying hey you know you owe us this money right what the fuck but he was you know like and then him just passive aggressively going so we'll just donate it because you didn't pay it yet you know what i mean (laughs) and so uh so i wrote him and i'm like um i gotta find it you know what actually (laughs) <laughs> just, here's how stupid I am. So I, I write him a note this morning, and I'm like panicked. Where the fuck is it? I thought I had it. Because uh, I have a million things to read to, to go through. Jokes. Isn't it crazy? Well, they're not. Yeah, but they're, they'll, you'll hear why later. We have a spo- we have a sponsor for the show. Oh, good. Yes, uh, I'll get to them in a second. You can afford to pay them back now. So he. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, uh, hey, man, you know, I just wanted to, we, we want to clear that by making it a donation to the show, da, da, da. So I wrote, Bruce, I apologize for not taking care of this and want you to know I wasn't holding out on you. <laughs> if I had been invoiced for the balance, I would have paid immediately. I appreciate you making up it as a donation, but that isn't necessary. I'm happy to settle up via PayPal. I don't want you to think I was trying to get over on you. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, he writes me back, he's like, this was not a passive aggressive attempt to get you to pay up. We genuinely love you and the show, and after last week's episode, we felt we really wanted to donate, so th- this is what we're doing. It's okay. We really en- we enjoy what you do. Thank you for what you do for us. Like he's like, so he's got to hold my hand. So you know who I am? I'm his little brother. I'm his fucking, I'm his Viking and addicted little brother, and he's got to talk me out of a fucking homeless shelter via email because that's where my head lives. My head lives with everybody's like so mad and angry at me that I have to fucking apologize because, I, you know what, dude? You can only hit a dog in the nose of the newspaper so many fucking times before he just starts fucking putting his tail between his legs and sitting in the corner on his own. <laughs> so uh, so the donation, actually, the deal with them now, it's pretty cool, is uh, we've got a new thing. If you want to donate to the show, and I'll tell you this now because I'm talking about tweetdoddy.com slash 40. Uh, for the month of July, folks, if you donate $20, uh, tweetdoddy.com slash 40 will give you a cock ring watch. <gasps> That's right. And if you donate $40, folks, uh, tweakedaudio.com will give you a pair of tweakedaudio.com slash 40 earbuds, which are in a million colors and a million styles, and, uh, and only play jazz. That's the, ba- that's the drawback. <laughs> no matter what you try to play on your iPod, if you put it in your ear, you just hear Kind of Blue by Miles Davis. Uh, <laughs> so that's if you donate $40. But if you donate $50, folks, $50 to this show, uh, you will receive earbuds and a cock ring watch from tweakedaudio.com slash 40. And uh, if you go on their site, by the way, you can use promo code 40 for anything that you're buying. If, if you forget to put in the 40, if you just go to tweakedaudio.com and just use promo code 40, and, uh, and that cuts everybody in. That gets all of us, all, every podcaster gets his dough. <laughs> Uh, so again, twenty dollars gets you a cock ring watch. Forty dollars gets you a set of earbuds, and fifty dollars gets you a cock ring watch and a set of earbuds. <laughs> so you can. So while you got everything all tightened up there to make sure you don't go off too early, you can listen to music also that kind of calms you down. It's perfect. <laughs> it's the perfect pre- anti premature ejaculation set. Earbuds to listen to music to coax you out of it, and a cock ring to tighten up the works down there. Uh. <laughs> To make y'all shiny and purple for your your uh, lover. All right, so <laughs> so please remember that at tweakedaudio.com slash forty. And and why not mention the uh, the sponsor of the show today as I go into that right now, as I uh, 
Uh, sponsor today is Vicodin. Vicodin is sponsored the show today. <laughs> uh, I, I haven't taken Vicodin since I had my wisdom teeth out when I was like fucking 15. And I remember it. Boy, was it great. That was fucking awesome. That was like if you're uh, like you took Vicodin and then you were in a swimming pool, even though you weren't. You know what I mean? Just like everything was just that weird motion of being underwater. God damn, it was great. Oh, man. You know what? I should go to Carbondale. Yeah, I got to meet my brother and go to a fucking homeless shelter. I can see the appeal now at this point. Uh, <laughs> I don't get it, folks. I have, uh, uh, I, and it's, I had things to talk about. I wanted to do a real show. I wanted to talk about stuff. And then I just fucking ran headlong into, uh, into that in the car. God damn it. Again, the well, I should again. I'll look at the good side of it. I'm talking to my brother, my little brother. <laughs> again, uh, I hope until he hears this show, and then he's like, "What the fuck, dude? Really? I mean, every conversation is going to be revealed." Um, I don't know. When I got nothing else to talk about, I suppose. What are you making a face for? There's a ton of shit that we talked about all the people in the show. Yeah, I know. I don't. Uh, uh, first, uh, well, all right. Look, do me a favor. Anyone who's offended by anything in the world, stop watching television or listening to anybody talk ever. <laughs> because you are going to find something to be bothered about no matter. Tracy Morgan, all right, who I've talked about on here, I don't feel what he did was wrong. I feel he did it in a comedy club. Uh, you know what? Did, do I really think he would stab a gay kid in the face? No, I don't. Uh, however, if Tracy Morgan were to stab a gay kid in the face, would it surprise you in the least? No. <laughs> And that's before he even said it. Like, before he even said, <laughs> I, I would stab a gay kid in the face, if I just read a story that said Tracy Morgan stabbed a gay kid in the face, I'd go, yep, that's Tracy Morgan. That's what he does. So uh, and then, so then they, they crucify him. They go after him for the apologies. And, uh, and he apologizes, and he apologizes, and oh my Christ, he continues to apologize. As a matter of fact, uh, I was watching Brokeback Mountain on HBO. Tracy Morgan rode up on a horse and apologized to Ennis and Jack. <laughs> I, I was astonished by it. I didn't know it was happening, but he did. Sure enough, clip, <laughs> clip, clop. Here comes a black cowboy, not previously unseen in this film. And he apologizes right to both of them. And, and this is at a part in the film when they don't even know they're gay yet. That's how strong Tracy Morgan's gaydar is and his, his will and need to apologize. He picked up that they were gay early in the film before they even went up on the mountain and stemmed the rose, as Randy Craig would say. And he clip-clopped in on a Palomino and apologized and then rode off into the distance after tipping his hat. And then he and Gene Wilder cleaned up the town. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> ah, pandering. I can't quit you. Um, just, and, and look, I understand why Tracy Morgan went and apologized. All right, I, I do. I don't... I'm not... I don't think he needed to. But he did need to because his network, NBC, went, hey, you know, you make uh, $250,000 a week with us. You should probably go on a damage control tour. That would be what we would suggest. And uh, is there a person among you who thinks that if Tracy Morgan loses the job at 30 Rock, he's just going to get another job? <laughs> when you're, I have, I've said this many times. Being paid to be yourself is the greatest privilege in the world. And he's paid ridiculous amounts of money to be himself on that show they wrote the character based on him he just gets to go in and be fucking crazy so if they said to me dude you're gonna like if they came to me look i don't make uh the you know 250 grand a week with this job certainly uh although folks i don't know if i mentioned tweakedaudio.com slash 40 <laughs> I, sh I should mention that if if you donate two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, you actually own tweakedaudio.com <laughs> I have that kind of pull. So if you donate $250,000 to this show for the week, then you own tweakedaudio.com. And then it can be tweakedaudio.com slash you. Uh, but, uh, but Tracy Morgan, man, if I'm him, I, you're fucked. I'm apologizing to everybody. I, don't fucking, I might suck a cock just to prove that I'm okay. You know what I mean? Seriously, just go, hey, I'm good with this. No, I, I mean, I, I'll just show you that I'm good with it. It's not like I'm enjoying it, but I'm doing it. Look at this. I can do this. Fuck yeah. To keep that fucking job? Why not? Why wouldn't you? Because again, you can't, uh, if he, where's he going to get a job? Where's Tracy Morgan? Is he going to get a job on Wall Street or at fucking Target? What's he going to do? I, uh, if you went to Target and there was a guy there and you were like, sir, can you help me find the, the baby clothes? And he took off his shirt and he said he was going to make you pregnant behind a dumpster? <laughs> You'd probably call the manager. Very rarely would you nominate him for an Emmy. 
So if you're Tracy Morgan, you apologize to whoever the fuck you got to apologize to to keep that fucking job. So I understand why he did it. I don't know. I don't think it's cool. I don't think he should have been forced to do it, but he did it. And I get it because he wants to keep the job and make the money. Fuck. Yeah. We all want to keep it. Cause again, he's a 42 year old black guy with one kidney. What job is he going to get? Blues singer. I don't know if the blues is hiring. And if it is, the line is out the fucking door considering the way the economy and everybody, dude, white people are applying at the blues right now. You go to the blues office and there's white people in line and they're going bow, 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 bow. It's like, dude. I think the blues is all full up. So, hey, 42-year-old black guy with no kidney, not going to happen. So go apologize to who you need to apologize to and keep your cushy television job because the blues is not looking to hire anybody right now. So, fuck, he apologized to everybody. He gets it all straightened out. He actually has to hug the guy that made the initial complaint. He goes to Nashville. He talks to kids. He, you know, and, and look, if it did some good, great. If you're a gay teenager and you needed the guy to come out of the television and tell you to accept who you are, that's fine. Because, again, I wasn't a gay teenager. I don't know how difficult and how hard it must be. I'm sure it's very, very tough. I was just a fat teenager. Uh, and I got pushed around and made fun of, too. But, uh, you know, you develop a thin, thick skin and you kind of, you know, and you know what you do? You eat. That's what you do. <laughs> you keep eating and eating and putting and building up that fat shell around yourself. That's what you do. So that's my recommendation for gay teenagers. Start eating. Something besides cock. Because <laughs> cock not nearly as fattening as it should be. Um, <laughs> again, not that I would know. It's been a long time. Uh, there may have been a development in cock that made it fattening. Now, I have no clue. So, uh, so Tracy Morgan makes all these apologies and he does all that, and that's fine. Good for him, and, and whatever you need to do to keep your job, and if, as long as it helped people and everybody's fine, that's great. So then the dust clears, and then Tracy Morgan's like, all right, is everybody okay? Everybody fine with me? Good. Can I finally get back to doing the thing that I do, which is saying outrageously offensive things in public? <laughs> And goes right back up on stage and, go, and does like a PSA about, look, I don't, I don't feel bad about gay people. I love gay people. They're fantastic. By the way, you should never date women with retarded children. <laughs> because they got retard strength like chimps. <laughs> yeah. And now everybody's out of their fucking minds wanting to apologize for that because that's the problem. See, that's the problem with the fucking apologizing. It's like, you know what? You go on this one apology tour and then he goes, literally, what is it, a day after he's done apologizing to the gays? He says the retard thing and everybody's like, oh, dude, now you get to apologize to them. Guess what? If there's anybody on earth not offended by what Tracy Morgan said, it would be the retarded people. <laughs> because, quite frankly, they're far too busy drooling and hugging people. <laughs> to give a flying fuck what he had to say they don't care i bet you know what i gotta be honest with you i bet even retarded people because it look in nashville there was one gay dude in the audience and he was offended by it i am betting you there was not a retarded guy in the audience to hear that so that means people became offended for the retarded people and decided to be their spokespeople and oh my fucking god back off can you just it's jokes it's just goddamn jokes He's an idiot. Can we just get past it? He's a goddamn idiot. <laughs> Retarded people are not offended. They're not upset. And if they are upset, what the fuck are they upset about? We already gave them an Olympics. Why are you angry at us? <laughs> we go out of our way to help you people. Oh Retarded people are not concerned with what Tracy Morgan had to say because they're training for the, you know, the 50-yard the stumbling hug. All right? <laughs> My God. Everybody gets a medal. Those people are not sad. They're upset. Give them something to pet. Not anything alive. You never know because, again, those people have retard strength. They're like chimps. They get snapped something directly in half. Did you ever see of mice and men? Give them a tiny little rug or build something. Give them some dryer lint. They'll be happy. They'll smile and drool on your shirt and hug you and walk away. And then you will cry because you are better than them, but not really better than them in your mind. Fuck me. Leave this guy alone. He's a comedian. He's going to say shit like that. Do you think Louis C.K. is really going to punch his kid in the face? Do you think any of these people are going to do these terrible things? No. They're fucking jokes. I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. Why are you upset? Everybody finds a reason to get upset now. We're in three fucking wars. Get upset about that. 
unbelievable. And people just, they declare themselves the spokespeople for the retarded. And again, I understand, differently abled, mentally challenged, whatever you want to say, retarded. But I, retarded is not a pejorative. It's not meant in, in like this horrible way. I, I, I mean, it's just... Uh, I know it's something like a grandpa who's justifying racist slurs or whatever the fuck, but I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't mean retarded like I'm yelling down at them or whatever. And then people won't even say it. They're like the R word. Fuck you, the R word. <laughs> you know what retarded people think the R word is? Rainbows. <laughs> because they make them happy. Because they're always happy. And you know why? Because they don't know they're retarded. <laughs> they don't know to be offended. <laughs> They're living their life the best that they possibly can. They don't need a spokesperson. You know what? You're the one who thinks that they need a spokesperson. You're the one that's offended. And you're the one that's stepping up to defend people who don't need to be defended because they're not offended or upset. You're the one who's projecting all of your feelings onto those people. And you you know what? That's retarded. (laughs) You're listening to The 40-Year-Old Boy. And next, who likes penguins? I'm TV star Paul Gilmartin. And you're listening to The 40-Year-Old Boy on the Mike Schmidt Podcasting Network. You know, I've got a podcast myself these days. I'd plug it here, but let's face it, nobody's listening to this nonsense. Has anybody here eaten a roach? Does anybody here regret waking up? (laughs) I mentioned we had a sponsor. This is an unconventional sponsor. What? We always have tweakedaudio.com slash 40, which, by the way, I don't know if I've mentioned, if you give $250,000 as a donation, you can make it tweakedaudio.com slash you. <laughs> because you will own the company. Uh, Bruce is on board with that. <laughs> and look, even if he writes me any, a mean email now, I've changed my ways. I'll read it as a nice email. <laughs> I've decided that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> my voice sounds like it's coming through a filter or something. If I if I shot my voice, like it sounded strong early, and I think I might have ranted it out. I hope not. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so our sponsor today, folks, is uh, now this is going to be uh, look. I I I don't understand why sponsors don't have easier things to read, but all right, I'm being we're being sponsored by a a, a short film. All right, a small film. Uh, that wants to raise funds so they can make this film. A uh, friend of the show, Jeffrey, who uh, I've actually been on his podcast called uh, the uh, Uncle Jeffrey and Kevin with a K podcast. Uh, he is a producer of this movie, <clears throat> short film. And uh, what they're doing is they're doing a, uh, a film. There's a, all right, do you know who Franz Kafka is? Uh, everybody? <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Franz Kafka, he, he had a, there was a, a story called The Metamorphosis, and it's about a man who turns into a cockroach. And uh, these guys went, hey, we should make that into a short film. And we should do it in a modern horror type of way. So the guy turns into a short film, uh, like it turns into a cockroach in a scary way. And it should be like a modern kid, not like, you know, fucking Kafka with his 1800s Germany, wherever the fuck he's from. <laughs> They're like, we got to make this short film and we uh, we need to get real actors in it so we can hire guys like uh, uh, the guy from Justified. Yeah, let's get him on the show. And uh, uh, that would be, uh, I forget the guy's name. Is it Nick Searcy? Searcy? I think it's his name, Nick Searcy. Sounds like I'm saying seriously. Nick Searcy? Uh, <laughs> Nick Searcy from Justified, who's actually the the chief of police uh, in, and he's Timothy Oliphant's boss. Uh, he's in The Metamorphosis in this short film. Uh, because apparently Justified is not the career maker we all thought it was, folks. Seriously, he's making a short film with people that are advertising on a goddamn podcast. Good for you, Seriously. Good to see your career is taken off into the stratosphere on the back of a winged cockroach slash man. I would venture to say that your metamorphosis from television actor to podcast advertisee is Kafka-esque. It's as almost as if your career has turned into a roach before our very eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Searcy. Uh, he's great on Justified. Look, we, I just I kid Nick Searcy. <laughs> but he's in this movie, so Jeff is producing it. 
And uh, he he writes me in a panic, like it was it was so weird. Like this hasn't been negotiated. This hasn't been a, a you know a, a days or weeks in the making. I get an email from this morning at like four in the morning. Dude, can we sponsor a show? We uh, we want to go ahead and talk about our uh, you our Facebook page, and then there's also an, uh, a website where people can go ahead and fund our movie because we want to go ahead and make it. And uh, I have to tell you, folks, when I heard that he was having trouble funding a short film about a man who turns into a roach. <laughs> I almost fainted dead away. I said, hold on a second. You mean people aren't lining up to throw cash in hand at you guys who nobody's ever heard of that are making a Franz Kafka short starring the sixth lead from Justified? Astonishing! I can't believe you had to turn to this sort of alternative way of raising funds. How is Hollywood not beating down your roach-covered door? <laughs> uh, so they have a Facebook page, and I'm going to read this to you, and it's long, man. It is fucking long. And uh, so and I, I'll tell you exactly what he said to me. It's First of all, it's facebook.com slash pages slash metamorphosis slash... One three three seven eight three four three 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 six six one one zero. Now, I don't expect anybody to go there via that. And he said to me, he's like, dude, that is a terrible link to rattle off. Can we can we post it on your Facebook wall too to drive some traffic? Um, I gotta be honest, man. I don't know how much traffic that's gonna drive. I mean, I I have thirteen hundred friends or whatever the fuck it is, and and I will try. I will go ahead and post it on there for your sponsorship fee. Uh, and people can go through and, and click to the metamorphosis page. And, uh, but I'll tell you what, here's the easier place to go to. Uh, if you want to go to indiegogo.com slash metamorphosis. Okay. This is the actual fundraising page for the film and it's indie. It's I N D I E G O G O.com slash metamorphosis. And I got news for you. I am not spelling metamorphosis for you guys. Uh, and by the way, this I should. All right. I'm making fun of this as if it's just Jeff, uh, you know, like because I've been to Jeff's house. I should tell you this. When I did the podcast I did, and Jeff lives and I'm this is not even a fucking joke. Jeff lives in the last house on the left <laughs> of a dead end street. And that's not even a joke. I, I drove down there and there was just there were like uh, uh, people in the night, you know, screaming like banshees wailing. There was a, a group of ghostly children playing kickball in a field at like 930 at night. I mean, he lives in this fucking torrentially awful neighborhood. And uh, and I picture him sitting in his apartment one night in the dark shadows playing upon the wall. And there was a tree outside and it, it the branches looked like feelers and, and cockroach arms. And he saw the shadow and went, ha ha. I must bring Kafka to life <laughs> as he sat in his hellhole apartment and decided to produce this. Uh, and then he, he uh, I'm making it sound like that, but you know, they were in variety Monday. I mean, they got a big write up in variety on Monday uh, about the, you know, cause they have uh, uh, the, the special effects guy that they have is a guy who he learned at the knee of the guy who created Jeepers Creepers. You ever see the movie Jeepers Creepers? I guess, <laughs> There's a dude in that who's scary. Well, this guy apprenticed with that guy, and he he made that. And there was one other uh, famous. What? All right. All of this information is available at the website indiegogo.com/slash/metamorphosis. If you go there, uh, you will go ahead and find out uh, all you need to know because there's a five minute trailer where uh, the two guys who are directing and writing the film. By the way, there's a writer. I don't. Why is there a writer? Kafka wrote it. Well, yeah. I mean, you don't really need a writer, do you? <laughs> Are you telling me, sir, with the fucking plugs in your ears, that you're better than Kafka? I think not, friend. Uh, what is that? Tiny.cc slash roach? Yeah, I just made a tiny URL for them. Oh, okay. So that's a tiny. So people can go to that go and to tiny.cc slash roach. And where will that take them? Take you to, the Facebook page. to the Facebook page. All right, folks. If you go to <laughs> tiny.cc slash roach, uh, that will take you to the Facebook page where you can learn all you need to know about them. <laughs> or, like I said, the main page we want you to go to. <laughs> If you go to Indiegogo.com slash metamorphosis, folks, uh, you'll go there. And like I said, you'll see this five minute trailer. And, and here's my favorite part of it. They want you to send money. All right. So they want you to go ahead and fund the film because I think they need like 30 grand. 
And first of all, they, they he wrote me and he's like, will you plug this? And I said to him, I go, dude, do you want me to just plug it? Because I'll plug it. Or do you really want to sponsor a show? If you want to sponsor a whole show, then I'll, you know, let me. And he goes, yeah, I want you to sponsor it, man. Talk at length of it and really go, and jazz it up. And I'm like, what? aren't you, don't you need money? Like, why are you sponsoring and paying me money when you need money for the goddamn, br- <laughs> right now, if you go to the page, Indiegogo.com slash metamorphosis, you're going to see the money the, 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 because they have a post of what they've raised. It's going backwards. <laughs> Every word I say takes like a five cents off of the total they've raised because they got to pay me to sponsor the motherfucking thing. <laughs> you got to be shitting me, Indiegogo. Uh, but then you watch, uh, literally, you watch the fucking trailer and it's two dudes and they're telling you about Kafka and they're talking about roaches and they're, and there's uh, the drawings and they actually have storyboards they show you. But this is the thing. They're trying to raise money. And I understand they don't have the money yet. Okay, so that's where I come in. <laughs> but, but if you watch the trailer, it's two dudes sitting at a picnic table with like a clay model of a roach head. Like it's like it looks <laughs> it's so fucking amateur night from the jump. Just these two dudes. and They're telling you this is what we really want to do. Well, you know what? I think what you should do is make less five minute trailers about what you want to do and just do it. <laughs> At least make a better looking model because I mean you're telling me about how great the special effects guy is and you're essentially sitting there with what looks like an ashtray I made in fifth grade <laughs> with antennas. It looks it looks like a clay pot broke and you put feelers on top of it to make kind of a half roach head. I mean it's like the worst model. It's just and again I don't know anything about the movie business. I haven't been in Variety. I don't know anything about what I, certainly not fundraising for Christ's sake. I mean, I get no, I have one sponsor to the show and I engaged him in a fight via email <laughs> because I thought what he wrote me might have been a fucking insult. <laughs> I can't imagine he has any of these problems with like, you know, Never Not Funny or, or any of the other because they sponsor a ton of podcasts, tweakedaudio.com. And I, I got to be the most hands on fucking baby that they've dealt with in their lives. Everybody else, they shoot him an email. Everybody's professional. They're like, yes, thank you. Done. I'm like, look, I know what you really meant by that email. No, I didn't mean anything by it. I meant that we want to send you fucking money for something our cock ring watches, idiot. <laughs> they got to be so tired of me. Uh, but that doesn't change the fact that they sponsor this show, baby. Uh, so if you go to tiny.cc slash roach, you'll get to the Facebook page for Metamorphosis. But uh, the truly important page is if you go to indiegogo.com slash metamorphosis, and uh, you will learn that the sh- it is a short film. It's a modern horror adaptation of Kafka's Metamorphosis, uh, which has been screaming for a modern horror adaptation. <laughs> Uh, oh, and it's funny. And, and, all right. I, by the way, I mentioned the bad clay model, uh, which, again, is mean and it's rude and it's wrong because I don't know anything about making fucking models. I got no clue. When I was a kid, I was supposed to make a fucking pot and I stole one and told them it was mine. I told, I think I told that story on here. I was in fifth grade. I stole a clay pot and told my mom I made it. And she's like, that's awesome. Uh, it was a lie. I never stole it. I, I'm sorry. And I did steal it. I never made it. Uh, terrible. So, uh, so I don't know anything about making fucking models, but I, and also I don't know how to draw. I can't draw a fucking thing. Mex does all the artwork and in their fucking thing, they've got the storyboards for, uh, for, you know, for the, the movie, you see the kids, the roach and he goes into the closet and they show you and they, and they have a guy reading the dialogue and, uh, they draw what is supposed to be Nick Searcy, who I've mentioned is very famous from television. Uh, as we, we know he's famous because again, if I sit here and I have to talk about him on my podcast, you know how famous he is. Um, <laughs> That's how, that's how famous he is. Just the very presence of Nick Searcy in this short film has led them to need to turn to me for fundraising. <laughs> that's a lot of clout behind the name of Nick Searcy. Uh, but then you watch the storyboards for fucking Metamorphosis on this little short clip, and uh, they draw Nick Searcy? He looks worse than the roach. I mean, it's like... <laughs> This kid's in bed, he turns into a roach, and he skulks into the closet, and then Nick Searcy comes in looking for him. He's his dad, Peter Serling, and he comes walking in, and he looks, it looks awful. It's like the worst drawing. I don't know who did that. I hope it wasn't the special effects guy. It, it, it look, you know what it looks like? It looks like, <laughs> it looks like there was a mix-up at the art hiring center, and they hired the guy who draws storyboards to make the model of the roach head, and the guy who makes the models of the roach head had to draw the storyboards. And I'm sure they were pleading with these two idiots. They're like, look, please, we've got to go ahead and do the jobs we were hired to do. And he's like, no, no, we're the directors. We're going to sit at this picnic table and tell people how great this is. You go do the mismatched jobs and do them poorly. Because the storyboards look so awful. Uh, 
<laughs> and again, I don't know what storyboards are supposed to look like. Maybe they look fucking great. I have no idea. The only thing is, instead of Nick Searcy, it looks like the funding is going to be tough to obtain because uh, the father of the piece is actually the monster that Chet is turned into in Weird Science. <laughs> At the end of Weird Science, Kelly LeBrock turns Chet into this oozing fucking pile of skin, and he's horrible looking, and that's what it looks like. He looks like the dad in Coffee. So he, again, looks worse than the roach in the storyboards, uh, but it looks like they actually have the creature that Bill Paxton turned into at the end of Weird Science as the father of this piece. So if you want to fund it, if you want to send them money, go to tiny.cc slash roach on the Facebook page. Read all about it. Read the important, impressive stuff. I'm, I'm certainly I'm downplaying it, folks, because I don't want to be that guy. I'm not Hollywood. I'm not Captain Hollywood. Uh, I don't know. I don't know this from that. I don't know the business at all. Capital B. Uh, but you can also go to Indiegogo.com slash metamorphosis and see this clip that I'm telling you about with the fantastic models and the amazing storyboards. <laughs> And two, not pretentious at all producers and directors sitting at a picnic table telling you what they're doing. Uh, I wish I could remember what the other, what the special effects guy did. Because then there's a cut to him and he's like, it, he's like carving the Heisman Trophy out of it's a ham. I mean, it's like, I don't know what it's like. It's just like just block of something and then he's turning it into a person. Good for him. I can't do that shit. Uh, but I thank them for supporting. And if you guys want to try to make up the shortfall they had because they had to fucking donate money to sponsor this show, go ahead and go to Indiegogo.com slash Metamorphosis and help them out because uh, they I, they need it. When you see when you see what they're working with. And again, maybe it's just because they haven't raised any funds yet. You know, they they had to. I picture them just walking through a field and they found a, you know, a cow pie and they had to mold it into a roach head and they dried it in the sun and they put it on the picnic table for you to look at. Because, again, I don't know how Hollywood works. They don't have any fucking money yet. So that's how, that's how it has to be. Are you on the page? Are you looking? Oh, they're raising money as we speak, folks. We can see. Oh, no, it's actually it is. It's decreasing as I speak uh, because they had to go ahead and support this. Uh, what the fuck do I know, folks? I don't know anything. My family's falling apart before my very eyes. Ears. I don't see them. I hear them on the phone. You know, I, I, I'm kind of a cock, right? Is that? Now that I think about it, now they just ran these guys into the fucking ground if they paid to sponsor the fucking show. That's just weak. It's a good project. Go check it out. I mean, they're, you know, they're, because I'm selling them completely short. I mean, they, they have the guy who, uh, the special effects guy, did, Green Goblin. That's what he did. He was, uh, he worked with the guy who was with the guy who did the green. Again, I don't, he might have seen Spider-Man. I have no idea. <laughs> All right. Anytime there's that tenuous thing where they're like, he learned at the knee of the guy who went ahead and had a sandwich with the guy who created the Green Goblin. I don't know what the fuck. I guess that's good. Again, here I see, I lapsed right back into cockery. I got to snap out of this cockery. God damn it. Why am I doing it? These people paid. And I saw Jeff short. Jeff's got a podcast and it was great that he had me on. Jeff's got a fucking Emmy. Jeff won an Emmy. He's producing this thing. And these guys, these directors and the writer and, uh, you know, Kafka, certainly he has a name. <laughs> what an ass. All right. But I mean, check it out, man. It's, it's worth it. It's uh, Indiegogo.com slash uh, metamorphosis. And also, I should tell you this, there's levels. Uh, Lily Von Stupp reminded me of this. She told me. She said that there's levels. If you donate a certain amount of money, you get a prize. Um, uh, sadly, uh, if you donate $20, you get a roach farm. I know it doesn't seem like something you would want, but it ties right in with the film. Donate $30, you get that piece of shit model of the roach thing that's on the picnic table. <laughs> God, again, the cockery rears its head. Stop at the cockery. <laughs> You donate $40 and you get, uh, you know, what do you get? Earbuds. No, that's us. <laughs> See, that's the way it works. It's like with our show. You donate $20 and TweetAudio.com gives you a Cockering watch. And you donate $40 and you get earbuds. You donate $50, you get Cockering watch and earbuds. It's the whole anti-premature ejaculation kit. Uh, I don't know if they're giving away an anti-premature ejaculation kit over at Metamorphosis at Indiegogo.com. Um <laughs> It depends on how much you give, I suppose. Well, I guess really when you think about it, uh, the entire concept is an anti-premature ejaculation because if you want to think about a kid turning into a roach and climbing into a closet, that's going to hold off your load. That is going to keep the pearls encased in the oyster for as long as you want them there. You are not going to get the machine gun anybody with your fucking... Uh, uh, what? What are, you, what are you sighing for? Come on, it's serious. I got to think about that. Next time I'm going at it with somebody, I'll be like, oh, man, I'm, oh, my God, I'm about to go. And oh, hold on a second. Guy turning into roach and crawling into closet. 
and then Chet from Weird Science at the end of the film coming in to save him. I mean, that's just, <laughs> oh, that whole thing. I don't even want to come any, ever again thinking about that. It's over. Uh, <laughs> it's all over. I'm, 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 I actually am retiring from sex. I'm, I'm hanging it up. And not, not me. Period. Well, I mean, I mean, it'll just be me and Karen, which it has been. But I have to accept the fact that that's it. That's the way it's going to be forever. Like, literally, it's not... Uh, uh, even because I'm uh, all right. July first is coming up, and I'm I'm uh you know that uh, as we all know, July first is the rebirth of Mike Schmidt losing the weight because it was July first, two thousand five, that I had the gastric bypass surgery. So now July first, two thousand eleven, everything changes. Uh, life change uh, certainly diet changes. Then I have to start working out. There's all sorts of different things I have to do. Um, because uh, you know I've just been an idiot for the past well not for the past five years for the past two years I've been an idiot and at home right now I have I have three containers of supplies the last three I will ever have because they're lined up for you know Wednesday Thursday Friday and yes I know Friday's July first I get that but it just happened to work out that way so unless I you know maybe I eat two tomorrow maybe I just go full on animal and just fucking go to work and eat a, eat a ton of candy tomorrow uh, but I, I I'm trying to figure out how to do it man I'm like I don't know I have a plan like. Part of me wants to go like almost full vegetarian, like go that route. Uh, but I, the, unfortunately, Karen's coming along for the ride with me, and I don't know if she'd be on board with that. She always says she would be. Again, my, I love my wife, but then she's always like, uh, I'm like, hey, man, you know, we got to do this July 1st. She's like, that's great. I'm, I'm with you completely. Hey, by the way, I bought a pinata. <laughs> what? Yeah, it was at the dollar store. It's full of candy. We just got to hit it. You're not supposed to go to the dollar store anymore. I, I don't want candy, a, a, a fucking burrow, a paper mache burrow filled with candy. I mean, I do, theoretically, but I don't. And plus, it can't be filled with good candy. You bought it at the dollar store. I'm going to crack it open. You know who falls out of that? The star of metamorphosis. He falls right out of that pinata. That's a dollar's worth of fucking paper mache burrow stuffed with roaches. Horrendous. And Smarties. And I got to be honest with you, I'd rather eat the roaches. Fuck you, Smarties. I don't like Smarties. I don't like sweet tarts. I'm a spree man, and I always have been. <laughs> no, I'm not. But I was when I was a kid. I, you know what? I actually, that's, all right, here's how stupid and fat I am. I ate spree because it was different than sweet tarts. Like, I thought it made me different. It made me stand out. Yeah, I only eat spree, man. I like spree. Nobody fucking cares what candy you like, fatty. Look at you. You're fat. You mean to tell me if I didn't offer you a bowl full of sweet tarts covered in cake frosting, you wouldn't shove it in your maw? Of course you would. And in 30 years from now, you'll tell a fucking story about it, you idiot. <laughs> horrendous i gotta get ready man so i want to go vegetarian i might but i mean it's like i but i i know one vegetarian like i knew uh a friend of mine was a vegetarian and we went to her house for thanksgiving and uh but they made regular thanksgiving food and they made a tofurkey as well they made her the thing and i wouldn't even try the tofurkey because that just sounds grim i eat tofu but don't don't form it in the shape of a bird i'm not eating the super <laughs> friends jesus fuck form of a turkey no just be tofu you're okay as tofu I enjoyed you as tofu. I don't need you to go ahead and dress yourself up as something else. Dude, look at this tofu. I turned it into a hamburger. No, you didn't. Still tofu. Just because you got the wizard from Metamorphosis short film to go ahead and carve your ham into a fucking tofu burger. Not working. That whole veg Because vegetarians, I, I don't mind them. You know, the, my friend wasn't ever in your face about it. That was just how she wanted to be. But other people are fucking, you know, I don't know if I want to be that, you know, I don't need anything without a face. You know those people, those idiots. Fuck that. And I don't need anything with a face. You've never heard that? You said without a face. No, I didn't. That's how I. But, but that's how I've lived my life up to this point. That makes sense because you know what? I start at the fucking face. I'm serious. If you put a fucking pig, like cook a suckling pig, and put it on a platter in front of me, I'm gonna start at the snout and eat my way to the ass. Done. I will crawl through that fucking thing like I'm spelunking through a cave. I do not fucking care. I've eaten pig ears and fucking snouts. I haven't eaten pig feet yet, but that's only because I haven't found anybody to cook them the right way. Holy shit. I tried to trick Karen. We went to a restaurant the other day and they had alligator schnitzel. I'm like, we got to get this. She's like, are you fucking kidding me? No. That was the same place I ate a pig ear. Well, I had a pig ear at Animal. And then we went to Son of a Gun, which is their sister restaurant, and they had alligator schnitzel. She's like, I'm not eating alligator schnitzel. I don't give a shit, man. I will. I will eat uh, whatever, whatever you got. That's it. If it's got a face, it's going down. <laughs> Serious. I don't give a, I don't care. I don't fucking care. What's that? It said in the Bible, right? You're supposed to eat things with a face. That's the whole deal. 
God gave us dominion over the fucking animals, and so you can do whatever the fuck you want them? Well, I'll tell you what. Give me that dominion with a side of fucking hash browns. These things are getting clocked. But not anymore, man. July 1st, changing my ways. Now the only thing I'll eat is a fucking paper mache burrow full of roaches. That's it. <laughs> but then I figure I'm losing weight, and I'm getting healthy, and I'm doing all that shit. What for? Why? I mean, I guess why? I mean, look, I want to do it for my wife and for me. I get that. But it's not like I'm ever going to have sex with anybody else ever. That so everything I'm like I'm I that's it it's finished I I mean even if I look good even if I look really good and I, and I have so much sexual wisdom to impart <laughs> I have so much to share sexually with all of you people how rude is that uh nobody will know my moves my moves are getting hung up now Karen's seen my moves you know you want you because know, the whole point of sex is that fucking walk in the, uh, there's a great scene in Devil's Advocate where Al Pacino's trying to give Keanu Reeves everything he wants and he says that walk into a strange girl's bedroom and it's like yep yeah that's the fucking greatest because you don't know what's happening you don't know what she brings to the table you don't know what she's got go- or what you've got going on all you know is you eat everything with a face <laughs> and she's got one god damn it my moves and then you won't even be able to use them anymore. I, I, oh, I, I had, all right. Here is my. I, should I even? I don't. Even, now I feel like I should just. I want to tell people of the ultimate moves, like my oh, ultimate yeah. move. All right. Here's. All right. This is the best move ever. Well, first of all, I'll tell you. I was on the road once, and uh, I was working in Des Moines, Iowa. I told you guys that I was in South Bend, and I uh, had worked the Funny Bone there, and I couldn't work any Funny Bones. Well, I did wind up working Des Moines Funny Bone one week. Uh, so I wound up going to work for, you know, that guy, Paul Lane. I told you about him, Mark Johnson, whatever. It's a long story by year three. So, uh, so I showed up in Des Moines, Iowa. I should tell you this. So I was working at the funny bone in Des Moines, Iowa. I had to stay at a condo. What you had to do is you had to go pick up, uh, the keys at the office before, uh, you know, you could go to the condo. So I checked in at the office. They were really nice. They gave me my keys and they told me I was in an apartment, uh, I think it was 14. It's a condo 14. It's a condo condominium uh, group. What do they call those? I don't even know. It's a bunch of fucking places stuck together. on. T- it's an ant farm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I get there and I go and I'm looking for number 14 and I park. There's number 14. So I get, grab all my stuff and I let myself in and condos suck when you work on the road doing comedy. All right. They're always bad. Uh, they're always really, you'll find an iron and a bunch of empty wire hangers and one of those wire hangers is jammed into the back of the television set. Uh, you always want to stay at a hotel because the hotel at least has, you know, they care. You know what I mean? The hotel has cable and you you have your own, it's a small room, but it doesn't matter. You, you'd rather have that than a full condo that was completely fucking empty and they don't care to keep up. And they'll be clean. I mean, I've told the story about when I was in Tulsa and the fucking roach walked out on me. Uh, Brian Noonan and I are sitting there in Tulsa watching a football game and a roach climbed out of the couch. Uh, and then across the room into the closet, and then the guy from Justified came in and shot it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sitting at the, I mean, that was, a roach ran across me, and I was sitting in a pair of shorts, and I'm like, fuck that. Like, literally, I want to go buy winter clothes at that point and fucking rubber bands to put on my, uh, you know, that, my, my pant legs. Oh, awful. Uh, remember I talked about the bee last week, about a bee, or the, the moth, or no, it was a bee that flew into somebody's ear. There was a story, did you see the story this week online? A little kid, 12-year-old kid, asleep, moth flies in his ear when he's asleep. He wakes up, the moth's in his ear, he tells his mom, and he's freaking out, and she's like, relax, you know, because nobody understands. Nobody fucking understands because they can't see. It's like when Brian Regan says, you walk through a spider web and you go fucking bananas, everybody's like, what the fuck's wrong with that guy? If you got something trapped in your ear and you're trying to tell people, they're like, I don't fucking get it, whatever. So he had to go to the emergency room, and they tried to drown it. They try Again, look, if there's a moth in my fucking ear, pull it out. <laughs> That's your fucking go-to right there. Don't try to drown it with saline. Don't try to fucking talk it out. Don't have a discussion with the moth about why he felt that he needed to fly into my goddamn ear. Get him the fuck out of my ear as hardly and quickly, as hardly, as quickly as you fucking can. Now, I don't give a fuck if you got to turn my head upside down and hit the other side like a ketchup bottle. (laughs) Get it out of my fucking head. Because they're talking about this kid. He's freaking out. He's in pain. He doesn't know what to do. They tried to drown it. They tried to like lure it out with a, you know, a lady moth. Like they built a lady moth model. Like Bugs Bunny, and they had it like robot walk by, and then you're know, expecting the moth to come out. And then finally, they pulled it out with tongs. They had to go in and get it, and it was alive. It flew around the fucking the emergency room, and then they, he put it in a jar, and he kept it, and he talked about it on the news. They put him on the news. So, uh, but that shit, d- dude, I, man, I might just start wearing earbuds from tweetaudio.com slash 40 as protection at all times. <laughs> To keep shit from flying in my ear. Because there's a story, Eddie Van Halen once was on the road and a bed, uh, an earwig climbed in his ear. 
And he woke up, and it, uh, let's be honest, though, Eddie's a fucking drunk. I mean, that might not have really happened. I mean, who knows what the fuck it could have been. He could have had, a, like, a loose pop top in his fucking ear. Some a Heineken bottle cap had lodged itself in his ear canal somehow. I have no idea. But, uh, but, yeah, he tells a story about this excruciating pain. He woke up in a fucking hotel, and he couldn't move, and it was just there was a thing in his fucking ear. Dude, protect your ears, folks. Hide your ears. Hide your wife. Because they're raping all your ears up in here. All right. Uh... Where was I? I'm in I'm in Iowa, and I'm in Des Moines, and I go to the condo. So the condos are always bad. They're always these really sparse rooms with like a fucking you know 14 inch TV. So I walk into this condo, and it's uh, it's completely furnished. I mean, it was fucking gorgeous. It had uh, it it you know I walked in the living room, and there's you know comfortable chairs and a nice couch and a big ass tv and it had magazines like an assortment of magazines on the coffee table and it was like walking into a demo uh, condo it was fucking fantastic so i go in uh to the kitchen and i, I you know I, I go into the bedroom to unload my stuff and um i open the closet and the closet has a bunch of clothes in it and uh usually it doesn't but sometimes there'll be a comic I, I should tell you this i was in uh what city was I in that I stayed? And there was a comedian actually living in the condo. Uh, I, I was there for the week and there was the, uh, a comedian named Dwight York, I think. And Dwight was actually living in the condo. It was his, home, it was his base of operations while he ran around and worked other clubs. So, uh, you know, I was used to seeing things like that in people in the closet. So I went into the this room and... But then I noticed they're women's clothes. I'm like, what, some, some fucking woman live here? What the hell's going on? So, and they're a nice bed with a big comforter. And uh, I put my, I throw my stuff on the bed. I was going to unpack it. I hung up my, my, you know, show clothes. I walk into the kitchen and I open the fridge because it's the first thing you do because in the condo it's usually half a jar of mayonnaise that you never eat. <laughs> and one of those empty bottles of distilled water. Like, you know, and then a million packets from, uh, of ketchup packets from fucking every restaurant in the world. Uh, you know, Vince Moranto used to joke, uh, he's a guy from Chicago. He used to, and t- it, just to hear him talk, he would say there's Arthur Treacher's tartar sauce in the fridge. And it would make me laugh. Cause I mean, again, nobody knows what the fuck that means, but, uh, I open the fridge and it's full of food. It's packed like milk, like actual milk and real, like leftovers are wrapped up. And I'm like, man, the fucking guy who lives here, lives here. Like, I mean, am I going to be infringing on him now at this point? Is he on the road out of town? I, I have no idea. So I close the fridge and on the fridge, there's a uh, electric bill stuck to the fridge with a magnet. And it's got. Uh, oh, uh, I, I, no one cares. No one's I, whatever. Uh, Janice Thomason is the name on the electric bill. And I'm like, who the fuck is Janice Thomason? So, uh. I look at the electric bill and it's for that, that condo and it starts to unfold upon me as I look at the countertop and I look at everything. Um, Janice Thomason lives here. So I grabbed the phone and I called the office and I said, uh, Hey, this is weird. I said, uh, am I sharing the condo with, with anybody this week? And they said, well, yeah, the, uh, hypnotist gary conrad is going to be in town and he'll but he's only here for like one or two days and he'll be there but he's not he's not coming till later in the week i said well who's janice thomason and they said we don't know who's janice thomason i said uh well i'm in her condo right now she lives in the condo right because all her clothes are in the closet and she's got food in the fridge and her electric bills on the on the on the fridge and they said where are you i said i'm at the condos i'm in condo 14 they said, what building are you in? I said, I'm in building eight, condo 14. They go, you're supposed to be in building six. <laughs> I said, okay. Why did the keys work for Janice Thomason's condo? Because I'm not shitting you. They gave me the keys of the condo. I opened her deadbolt and I opened her fucking doorknob. And they go, we don't know, but you need to get out of there. That is not our condo. (laughs) So now I'm sitting, I'm holding the phone and it's like, it's literally like the calls are coming from inside the house (laughs) because I'm thinking Janice Thomas is going to walk in and see the feature rack from the funny bone on her phone and eating a goddamn stalk of celery out of her goddamn fridge. And uh, uh, so I lose my mind. I'm like, well, I mean, all right, well, I'm just going to leave. Do I, do I lock the door? What do I do? And they go, just get out of there. Get out of there. 
I'm like, okay. Because I looked at and I looked at my sheet of paper, and that's the thing is I thought the eight and the six, it was the bad typewriter or something, but it looked it looked like an eight. But what someone had done was type the six like twice over itself, because I guess it was faded. And uh I wound up in this woman's house and I, I grabbed my stuff, went out to my car, went over to building six, and uh opened the door. And of course, shitty, fucking horrible 14 inch television, <laughs> wire hangers, milk, <laughs> awful, um, distilled water and Arthur Treachers, but a fucking uh, uh it, I always wondered, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, cause again, I could have gone over to Janice Thomason's anytime I wanted and gone into her fucking house. I mean, and so then when I warned the officer, like, do not tell anybody else about this, please. And I'm like, well, wouldn't you want to tell Janice Thomason that I have keys to her fucking house that every middle act is, you know, it's funny because then Vince Champ is a comedian who it turned out was raping girls in cities where he was doing stand up. Oh, so if Vince Champ ever got Vince Janice Thomason's keys, I mean, he, he would actually consider it like a mulligan. He'd be like, ah, you know, there's not even a challenge here. I. But yeah, her the keys let me in her fucking apartment. And so then it dawned on me, like I would come home at night and I'd go, I should try the condo 14 at every single building, like to see if these keys work in every single one. But then I thought, well, that's a good way to get shot in Iowa. <laughs> so, uh. So that week I worked and I was I was doing comedy and they brought in the hypnotist unfortunately and it was awful so I wound up opening for him and I had known Gary, uh, the hypnotist because I, when I worked at the Funny Bone in Chicago as the house MC, he would come in and do his hypnotizing act, and uh, and he was just a, you know Gary was a. It's so funny to meet people that are road warriors that are used to being on the road. You know what I mean? Like that thing where they, they can wash their socks in the sink and they're clean. You know what I mean? Or they they can. Uh, they, they, they can take a shower and hang their suit and then blow dry it. You know what I mean? And they're like, oh, yeah, it's clean. I thought, all these magical bullshit things that I never fucking learned because, you know, I'm busy, you know, looking through Janice Thomason's mail. I didn't, I didn't fucking care to learn how to survive on the road like that because I only went out for, if I went out for two weeks at a time, then I'd have to do my laundry. I, I learned a lesson once. I told this story, I think. I worked Fresno. Did I ever tell you that story? I was in Fresno, which is the armpit of the fucking earth. And uh, here's how bad Fresno was. And this is, this is totally the truth. Um, I had to walk. I was, you know, it was in an Italian restaurant and then I was staying at a really nice, uh, hotel, like a Marriott just down the block. But when you would walk, it was fucking 111 degrees in Fresno. It was so fucking hot. Even at night, it was so hot. It was so hot. You could hear it. You know, that noise that like it just that fucking steamy, hot, amazing jungle rainforest fucking bullshit noise. So, uh, I would walk to and from the club. I was there for like four days and this is the weekend the Jeffrey Dahmer thing hit. Uh, that, that's how long ago this is uh, because I actually did j- Dahmer jokes on stage because it was so funny to me. Uh, but when you would walk to and from the condo, uh, there were roaches in the street. That's how fucking hot it was, man. And I look, I've only been to Florida once and it was on vacation. I never saw what I've been told is the worst roach problem in history. You lived there, so you probably know. Huge. Yeah. Madagascar fucking. Yeah. That's the heat. That's what I heard. I heard hissing roaches in the fucking street in Fresno. But that, and I was like, what does that say about your infrastructure? If you have homeless roaches, if the, <laughs> literally the roaches are like, they're like, Hey dude, there's a Marriott right here. They're like, nah, we're good here out on the curb. <laughs> we're fine on this sewer grate. Um, but I was in that hotel in Fresno. And, uh, again, I, I was not, I was new to the road. I didn't know how it fucking worked. So, uh, the end of the first night, I sent out my clothes to get washed and cleaned. Like I called the guy because I was like, ah, I'm living the life, man. I'm on the road. So I called the hotel. I'm like, yeah, pick up my clothes, do laundry and, and uh, go ahead and do the uh, dry clean one shirt and then wash the rest, do laundry. Like I actually wash my clothes. They're like, fantastic. It was hot. I'm like, man, I, you know, if I'm sweating, I want to get And uh, they were like, great, sir. It'll be done tonight. So uh, that day I went out, I did radio and I, I avoided roaches in the street. And uh, I went <laughs> home back to the hotel and uh there was my there were my clothes all hung up and folded and in a nice bag and everything was squared away and uh it only cost me 77 dollars to dry clean two shirts and a pair of pants and to fold and wash one load of laundry 77 dollars i still have the ticket i saved it uh because I called the front desk and I said, uh, hey, I just got my laundry and some dry cleaning. They're like, yes, sir. And I, I said, oh, I think it was it on time. And I go, certainly. They go, is anything missing? I go, no, it's all in this nice bag. It's all packaged very well. I'm just calling you to tell you I am never paying for it. 
they're like, what do you mean? And I said, I, $77? You're joking. You're absolutely joking, right? I mean, this is, this is ridiculous. And they said, well, sir, I, you know, the, I go, you didn't list the prices. They go, well, you, you know, it's, it's done. It's in-house, but it's always handled this way. And, you know, they started arranging it. And I said, well, why is it $77? And they go, well, no, that's, that's also the charge for uh, you did have a breakfast, you know, so we just put it all in the same tab because we picked them up and did all that we because they delivered my breakfast and picked up my laundry so they put it on one tab so i i guess the addition of toast and eggs <laughs> put my dry cleaning and laundry into the stratosphere <laughs> and uh i actually again i laughed out loud i go oh breakfast changed it i go i am not paying for this at all i said if you want to come up with a different number and get back to me i'm here for another day or two but i am literally i am 77 dollars. that's a joke i will pay you you let's negotiate it down but that's ridiculous you know it's ridiculous right the guy goes sir i agree with you it is absolutely ridiculous he goes but that's what we charge and i said well i am not paying it and uh i went and did my show the next couple of days everything was fine and then when i left to check out uh there was a charge for 34 dollars on my uh on my thing the guy had basically cut it in half and I was happy to pay it. Not really, because that's still about a 300% markup from what it should have fucking been. <laughs> but uh, I paid it. So I learned my fucking lesson. But these, so these guys on the road, like I didn't know how to survive, but he's like washing shit in a puddle. I mean, he's like that guy. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm working at the bone. I'm doing my thing. And uh, I, I, this is before I was meeting, uh, I was with Karen. So I was, I was still, uh, still on the prowl, uh, <laughs> I guess, if that's what you want to call it. Uh, because that's, if you have a cock, you're looking to get laid. You just are at all times, even married now. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you this now. Oh, I don't even know why I'm telling you this. Um, I think I've talked about it on here before. I will, uh, I will watch girls walk by and, uh, and Karen will, you know, she busted my balls about it for a while, but I explained to her, I look, it's like art. You know what I mean? It's like, how do I not look? I have a cock. I have to look. I'm, I'm still coming home with you. I'm walking with you. Everything's fine. We're together. Everything's great. And, uh, that explanation held <laughs> for a while. Uh, but I'm finding out now that that explanation is no longer good. And, uh, that my wife is not very happy with me when I do something like that because we were out the other day in a parking garage and, uh, actually I apologize. We weren't at the parking garage. We had saw, we saw a movie at the Los Angeles film festival. And as we were walking out, uh, a woman walked by in a white sundress. And, uh, the thing is she had worn the white sundress because it was hot during the day, but it was a little colder at night. (laughs) And, uh, she didn't anticipate the change in the climate or the temperature, And she certainly didn't uh, know that her nipples were going to be that interested in what was going on that evening. (laughs) So she walks by in this fucking cotton sundress with amazing heels and perfect fucking pedicure. And I mean, look, come on. It's art. It's a painting walking by. I got to take a look at it, right? Uh, So I I watched her walk by and I I, and I had turned. Look, I I turned my head. Uh, And Karen decided in front of all of the people that were there and not a huge scene. But there were people with an earshot, and she decided to tell me how much she hates that, and uh, how she can't believe that I that I do that, and uh, it, it how it bothers her. And uh, I explained to her that I thought we had covered this. <laughs> I'm allowed to do whatever I want, and you're allowed to be with me, <laughs> right? I thought we figured this out years ago. Uh, so I tried to explain to her. I go, look, I just, I thought we covered this. It's not, I'm with you. We're leaving. I'm not doing anything. Right. And she's just like, you know what? But it's just, it's just, you shouldn't do that. It's just, it, I hate when you do it. I hate when you turn your head. It's like, I, I, you know, she goes, I guess if you want to glance or something. And if I don't see it, that's fine. But if you turn, if you make a big production of it, I go, I didn't make a big production of it. She goes, you turned your head. I go, that's not a big production. That's not, <laughs> I've seen Tex Avery cartoons. All right. There was no. <laughs> The wolf doesn't just turn his head and smirk, all right? He fucking hits himself on the head with a shoe and says, Auga. There was not one Auga that emitted out of my fucking pie hole. All Iugas were tampered down into my gut for later. I do not just dispense with random Iugas. So, uh, so I, of course, did the mature thing. And uh, as we walked to our car, whenever a woman would approach, I would put the free pe- newspaper from the Los Angeles Times Film Festival up in front of my face. <laughs> And I would say, you need to tell me where the car is because I can't see. And I would put the, I had the paper up because a woman was approaching us. And normally I would say, hello, you know me, I'm a friendly guy. 
uh, and I'd say hi to you, but we're in a parking garage, and uh, this woman comes walking up, and I she kind of looks up and smiles, and I immediately put the paper in front of my face <laughs> and keep walking, and then Karen says hello to her, and she's just like, hi, and I could see how weird she is. And then I will tell you this, is that woman was black, so then in my head I'm like, she thinks I'm the worst racist who's ever lived. <laughs> She either thinks I'm very interested in the film festival or I am the worst racist on the planet Earth or both. Uh, but then I couldn't believe it. I was so I, I was so angry with Karen. I'm like, you because I uh, I go, seriously, do you just want me to put my cock and balls in your purse? How do you want me to handle this? I'm a man. I'm sorry. That's who I am. Uh, but I guess in reality, I need to just that's why I'm saying I got to just fucking I got to retire. I got to just retire, man, I, because it's like I just got to realize that this is my lot in life and that's where I'm, I'm at, I, I suppose, because every other guy gets neutered. Everybody makes the jokes. They all make the joke about how they hold the purse and, uh, you know, they they get their honeydew list and they do all those things. And I've I've fought against it all along because I don't live a real life. I live with my wife and we don't have kids. We don't we're married, but we're not. I, I didn't think we were that type of married. I thought we were together and it was great. Uh, but I'm finding out that as we get older, I guess um, she longs for that type of married, I suppose. And maybe I'm out of line. I could be fucking out of line. I have no idea. But I, I guess uh, I got to stop being a guy. I mean, it's like it feels so awful. It feels like when you go to the zoo and you see a lion behind the cage and he's just sad. And you're like, yeah, he's fucking sad because you know why? If you if I if I pushed one button, he would get to run out and eat a penguin. That's all he wants to fucking do. That lion sits there right now in that green concrete and that fucking fake plastic palm frond, and he's going, fuck, I want to eat a penguin. God damn it. That thin layer of glass is keeping me from eating a fucking penguin. That's all I want to do. I want to walk around. I, wanna, I don't even want to eat the penguin. I just want to watch the penguin waddle by. That's all I want to do. Just let me look at the penguin. I'm not going to pet the penguin. I'm not going to touch the penguin. I'm certainly not going to ask the penguin where it's from. I'm not going to do any moves on the penguin, but can't be, can I just watch the penguin walk by because it's interesting? How often do you see a penguin that you want to walk by? <laughs> and a penguin in a white cotton sundress? Holy fuck. <laughs> How did you not turn your head? <laughs> so that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm in the neutered phase. I'm in the fucking, you know, uh, uh, eunuch phase, I guess. I don't fucking know. I, I don't know what. And I could be, again, I could be wrong. All right. I might be wrong as I as I think because I love my wife. I, I that's the whole thing. I'm not trying to dis disrespect her in any way. I don't want to leave. I'm not going anywhere. I want it to work out for us. So everything's fucking fantastic. And then eventually, once we get to be rich, then we can start inviting some of these penguins over to fucking join us. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Because that's where we've come from. From the time I started the show, if you remember when I started the show, my wife, I asked what I wanted for my birthday was a threesome. She said, OK. <laughs> Now I turn my head to look at a sundress and I can't, I, we're done talking for a week. How the fuck did it change in four years? And again, I love my wife. I'm not looking to disrespect her. I'm not looking to, you know, I don't want, I'm not this guy who's like, oh, Jesus, ball and chain. Fuck that. She's the best person I've ever met. She's the greatest thing in my life and the best friend I've ever had. But Jesus, you got to understand that I'm still a guy, right? Right? You know me and you know I'm not going anywhere. Fuck. So I don't know. I don't. I, I. I. So my moves are getting hung up. So I. I uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, away from myself. I'm in Des Moines and I'm working and I'm uh, looking for ladies because that's what I do. I don't drink. Again, I don't drink. I'm either back at the room with fucking fifteen dollars with a Taco Bell plowing that into my face, or I'm looking to fucking get laid. So. Uh, one night, I'm, I'm just, I, I hang out at the bar. I don't want to hang out at the bar, but Gary Conrad wrangles me into hanging out at the bar. He actually, you know, <laughs> here's what Gary Conrad is. Again, he's a guy. He, he's also a guy. He's a road warrior guy. And uh, he, he lures me into, like, he wants to go to lunch. I go, all right, Gary, I'll go to lunch. He's like, good, we're going to Hooters. And uh, <laughs> look, I don't, I don't care for Hooters. I'm not a Hooters guy. You know what I mean? I don't like the food. Because again, that's, as a fat guy, it's more important for me to have good food because I'm not going to fuck any of those girls in the orange shorts. And uh, look, I like looking at penguins, but I, you know, not at the expense of a horrible lunch. All right, let's put it that way. I'll look at hot penguins in orange shorts, but uh, you know, not if I got to have fucking bad wings to choke them down with. No, I'm, if I'm going for lunch, I'm going for fucking lunch. If you want to go to a strip club, let's go to a strip club. I don't need to go to an almost club and have bad wings. So, uh, so we go to Hooters and he orders a fucking catfish sandwich that looks like a xylophone. I mean, it is just 
because I don't know what to eat at Hooters. I'm like, whatever the fuck, I you know, wings, whatever you got, that's fine. And and also, we're in Iowa. You know, no offense to Iowa, but I mean, how good could the Hooters be? <laughs> that's that's mean, probably, but I don't care. But I've I've gotten laid in Iowa. Case in point. Uh. So we go to the Hooters and we we actually chat up the waitress and uh, and Gar- I, when I say we I mean Gary chats up the waitress and I should tell you this is something that is a pattern with me when I would go on with comics that I didn't know all right when I was with Mike Toomey or Rex Havens or Brian Noon and guys that I knew we would go out and have a great time we would go to lunch we would go to a you know a store we'd hang out at the bar at the club afterwards we'd have a really good time because they're funny and I'm funny and we all clicked but if I'm on the road with people I don't fucking know. Uh, inevitably then you wander into their alcoholism and you wander <laughs> into their need to be spoken to and their need to be noticed and their need to find somebody to go ahead and say, Hey, look, I'm a comedian too. And, uh, I don't do that, man. I hang out with my friends and I want to have fun and be funny. If I'm funny, I want them to think that I'm funny guy who's eating lunch. I, I don't want them to think that I'm there doing a commercial for the funny bone later. <laughs> Uh, but every fucking other comedian that I, I, I would say 75% of them when I would go out to lunch and hang out with them, it would turn into a fucking thing where they'd be, you know, singing with the birthday people at the, at the, at the restaurant and clapping and, you know, passing out free passes and doing all this promotional work. And I'm like, dude, I just want a soup. I don't give a fuck if these people think I'm funny or not funny. I just want to have a soup. So, uh, oh my God. Anyway, I, so Gary's chatting up the Hooters waiters and especially there. All right. Look, it's even worse when I go to Chi Chi's, one of these other motherfucking places and guys try to involve themselves. But at Hooters, these girls don't want to fucking talk to you, dude. They don't want to wear those shorts. They don't want to be there. They don't want to do anything. Uh, but you know, Gary's talking to him and he's telling him he's a hypnotist and I can hypnotize you and stop you from smoke and all that. Every angle I would imagine a hypnotist fucking uses <laughs> to try to get into those tight orange shorts. He's cranking them up. And uh, I'm just eating my wings and praying we can fucking leave. And uh, but then we went. He talks to the waitress and she's receptive. And uh, he talks to two other waitresses. He tells them he gives them passes for the show. You got to come out. This will be fun. It'll be a great time. And uh, I, uh, you know, we leave. <laughs> and again, I should tell you this, Gary. Uh, when he was the funny bone in Chicago, I we hated him. I was just like, dude, I can't. Uh, why is Gary here? Because he was just a lout. Uh, but when I'm on the road with him, he actually turned out to be a pretty good guy. Like when I stayed in the condo with him, granted, he, I, I can't I can't begrudge a guy for fucking harvesting penguins. What the fuck? That's his thing. <laughs> Again, we all got a cock and whatever angle you got to work. If fucking, hey, I'm a hypnotist is your crowbar to get between those two orange short clad legs. Go ahead and do it. Good for you. I just want to be involved in it as a prop. So, uh. That night we do the show. Everything's fine. The next night, because uh, he, again, he's only in town for like two days, three days. I was there Wednesday, Thursday with Real Comics. Then he was there Friday, Saturday, and he was doing a special show Sunday. So he's there for three days. So uh, so Friday night he shows up and, uh, uh, you know, everything's fine. When we, we go to lunch, the, the girls don't come to the show. Saturday, uh, we do the early show and uh, everything's fine. He does his hypnotist show. We do the late show and the Hooters girls come. And... Uh, there's like a party of five girls with, you know, boyfriends or guys, whatever the fuck. And of course the girl that, you know, Gary likes, she comes right up to him and starts talking to him. And, and, uh, she's like, yeah, I want you to meet my boyfriend. And he's Gary's upset. You know, he fucking gets a watch and spins it and snaps his fingers. And the guy jumps off a bridge. I don't know what the fuck, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but they have all, you know, their group of girls, but then there's another, there's a girl with them who I did not see at Hooters. And I don't know if she's a Hooters waitress or not. Uh, but oh my God, is she cute? She's like, she's, and she's a spinner. She's real small. And, uh, oh, sorry. Well, come on. Everybody knows what a spinner is. And, uh, but look, you know, short girl, big tits, uh, you know, again, if she would have had glasses, I'd still be living in Iowa. Um, but she had, she had corkscrew curls like all the way down. No, that's you're, you're safe. You're not short enough. And I'm already married. Um, and you don't care. You got a clown. Uh, I, I love the way I insinuate myself like like you're in. You know, oh, yeah. Well, like you weren't going to be up to my standards. Yeah. Take the glasses off quick. You're in danger. Now you're not short enough. Bullshit. If we're not doing this show, you don't fucking look at me. Um, so. So this girl is like a little short girl and she's got pin pin curls like little, little like, you know, ringlets. Oh, man. So cute. And this is when I still looked. I actually I hadn't put on like a ton of weight. So I still looked good. And I'm wearing like my silk jacket with a fucking, you know, I'm looking, you know, crazy Zubas. I'm looking awesome. And uh, <laughs> um, so so I, I wind up talking to her. 
And uh, her name is Beatrice, but they call her Betty. And uh, which is like, I, it seems like a weird thing, but I guess I, I, we talked about it. I'm like, really? And she's like, yeah, because B is like an old person's name. And it's, and it's in my aunt. She goes, but Betty, I can, you know, it's, I can live with. And so I'm like, all right. So we wind up talking all night and we do the late show and uh, he, some of the Hooters girls get hypnotized and the whole town knows they're Hooters girls and Gary makes a big deal out of it. So literally every other time it's like this wholesome family show where, you know, someone pretends to be a gladiator and then someone has an argument with an invisible man and, you know, everybody's happy. Well, not the late show. He hypnotizes the Hooters girls and they're jumping rope for 45 minutes. Good night. Like it's that kind of show. Because not only does he want to get it over with so we can try to fuck them, you know, but he also wants them to just do whatever they can while they're on stage. And they're happy to do it. I don't even know if it's true or not, the hypnotizing thing. I have no idea if it works. Uh, well, you say no, but my brother Lenny, one time at the Funny Bone, uh, he went up. He volunteered to get uh, to get uh, hypnotized by Gary Conrad. And he started doing stupid stuff. He actually took his shirt off. And uh, because he made him take his shirt off, like do like a fake like stripper thing or whatever. And also, I should tell you this, when Gary would do the thing at the Funny Bone in Chicago, uh, we I was an MC, but I would also have to work the the stage because people would get to the edge of the stage and have to stand there in case they fell. That was the whole deal. So uh, my brother Lenny starts walking. He's doing whatever the fuck with the shirt off. I think he was dancing or and uh, he steps like off the stage and kind of stumbles and uh I caught him and I caught him by his hip and his arm and I kind of helped him back on stage and he stumbled and he looks and he came out of whatever he was in and he realizes he's in a room with his shirt off. <laughs> so he went under and uh and he immediately got weird and put his shirt right back on and then did the rest of the show but didn't really participate. And then afterwards I said to him I go, "Were you okay?" and he goes, "I was I didn't know what was happening. I really didn't." And I'm like, you're joking. And he goes, no, I don't know what happened. He goes, I woke up with my shirt off. And he goes, I felt like I was asleep, like I was dreaming. And then all of a sudden you were there and I had my shirt off and I just felt really uncomfortable. <laughs> so maybe it happens for some people. It happened for Lenny. Uh, so Gary does his thing with the Hooters chicks and whatever. So uh, afterwards, we're all there at the bar. We're closing the bar. And uh, then they're like, hey, let's go to After Hours, whatever the fuck in Iowa. And uh, I don't know what the fuck After Hours entails, but it's some other bar. And uh, then they're like, hey, let's go. We all went to one Hooters girl's house to drink. So, And Gary's still wearing like his tux, like his fucking, it's crazy. Uh, and I'm the whole time I'm talking to Betty, you know, and, and she and I are getting along great. And uh, because she also thinks it's ridiculous. Like she works, she's one of those people who works at Hooters because she needs the money, but she doesn't work as the waitress in the orange shorts. She works as like a cashier person, and but she's hot. Like she should be in the orange shorts, I think. Whatever the fuck. So I think, you know, I'm talking to her and we're getting along. So we're kind of, it's great. We're kind of watching what's happening amidst everybody. You know, we're, we're detached from it. Uh, this is a long ass story just to tell you my move. I should just tell you my fucking move. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whatever. So anyway, the bottom line is Betty and I are hanging out night ends. And, uh, she says to me, uh, as it's breaking up, uh, I go, you know what? I don't have a ride. Cause Gary has, uh, gone to drink some more with more Hooters people and uh, we had left my car at the club. And uh, she goes, well, I can give you a ride to your car. Betty did. And I said, oh, okay. So uh, she tells her friends that she's going with me. And of course, then they all, they make a, because they're drunk, they're, ooh, they make a big noise and they're being silly. Uh, although I'm, I'm all for it too. I'm like, yes, Dad, make that noise because that's happening. Because <laughs> someone is about to get destroyed. Uh, so she goes, she drives into my car and I go, hey, I go, it was, it was nice meeting you. And she says, well, where are you going? And I said, well, I'm, I'm at the condo. And she goes, well, you know, if you wanted to come over to my house for, uh, you know, just like a nightcap or whatever, or a drink. And I said, uh, we don't drink. That was the whole point. Like, we weren't drinking with them. And she's like, well, I know, like a soda or something. Like she starts laughing because, I mean, it was like, it was such a weird thing to say a nightcap again. <laughs> because her name's, <laughs> again, Beatrice would ask for a nightcap. You know what I mean? From the 20s. <laughs> Uh, so, so I busted her balls on that. I made fun of her. I go, nightcap. And I, why do you need to know the full dialogue? Nobody needs to know the dialogue. <laughs> so I said, yeah, that's cool. So I follow her to her place and, uh, we go in the house and, um, I, you know, I walk in, everything's fine. She lights some candles. We get some drinks, uh, soda, as I mentioned, and uh, we're on the couch and, you know, it happens cause I'm the man <laughs> and, uh, we start going at it on the couch and uh, she she takes my hand and she's like, 
all right, we're making out, we're going at it. And uh, it gets to the point where his shirt's off and then uh, somebody's pants are off. And then uh, I was like, I go, are we doing this here? Or do you, we want, do we want to go upstairs? She goes, we can't go upstairs. She goes, we're fine here. I said, you sure? And she goes, yeah. And then it gets progressively more heated and, uh, you know, a bra comes off and maybe another shirt comes off. And then I, uh, she leans back and looks at me and I go, uh, you're sure we, we can't go upstairs. We're, and she goes, no, we can't go upstairs. We're fine here. Uh, so then some, uh, shoes are off and some shoes are left on. And then, uh, <laughs> there's things that are removed and, uh, uh, maybe someone's naked and, uh, and then maybe the naked person leans back and looks at me and takes my hand and goes, all right, let's go upstairs. <laughs> so uh, we make it to the stairway. And I should say there's five stairs up to a landing. And then there's a left turn and there's a bunch of other stairs that go up to the top floor. And uh, she pulls me up on the stairs and, you know, we're it's that thing where you can't keep your hands off one another. You know what I mean? So like she's naked. She's got me by the hand. We're making out. We go up the five stairs and we start making and then we go. I go to go up the rest of the stairs and she pushes me against the wall and she's like, no, we can't. We can't go upstairs. And uh, I'm I'm really good as I'm sure most of you and guys are always good at this. Uh, I'll take whatever you give me. All right, that's fine. I mean, uh, I'm always pushing to get more, but I'm going to take whatever you're... I will eat every single breadcrumb you leave on the trail. <laughs> okay? Uh, so, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, and wherever the trail ends, that's where the trail fucking ends. I will always try to extend the trail. I will try to go deeper into the woods. Uh, but if you're out of breadcrumbs, and I'll realize, well, we're out of breadcrumbs, and I'll settle for whatever I can. But uh, so we stand there on the landing and I'm like, are you sure? And then we start making out on the landing and then things start to happen on the landing. And uh, maybe someone sits down on the floor and then maybe someone else lays down and maybe someone else slides down and puts their face uh, somewhere where they should on the landing. So uh, basically uh, she's laying on the stairs. She's on the landing. All right. There's five. And I'm on the stairs and uh, she's got her head up against the wall and uh, her feet on my shoulders and uh, I'm going down on this chick. I'll tell you that right now. Enough of the, <laughs> enough of the vagaries. Uh, because again, folks, that's that's who I am. I am I am all fucking mouth. That's it. <laughs> I'm I'm not even kidding. It's like you know, for food, for talk. I should just be. That should be my logo. It should just be a big fucking mouth. Because that's what I am into all the fucking way. I am into eating anything you got. I will, I will, I am talking and eating and, and fucking going to work. All right. I, I will, I will, uh, I will strap you on like a fucking scuba mask and you won't see my face till the morning. Because you know why? Cause I like it and I'm fucking good at it. And I want you to go, holy fuck. I'm going to be the story you tell 10 years fucking later because the rest of me, no great shakes. I'm not going to lie to you. The rest of me, I can, you know, I can make do with what I got, but from the neck up, you're getting fucking wrecked. You, I'm, you will shiver just thinking about it. Cause it, you know what? It's all I, I talking or or fucking eating or uh, any other activity that is needed. Everybody gets a medal. <laughs> Believe me, at the end of it, you'll be smiling and drooling, <laughs> clutching your medal and remembering me for years. So I go down on this chick and I look up and it's, there's nothing there's that view is fucking fantastic. That view where you're looking up and you see their face and you see them biting their lip and their hairs and their eyes. And you know, you're doing it, man. You're fucking running the show. Cause again, like I said, I know wh what I can do. So I'm like, yeah, let's do this. And, uh, and uh, so she's, I'm going down on her and she's like, you know, wrapped around my head and, uh, all right, I, I'll share with you the move. Why not? Why don't I share with you folks the move? <laughs> Uh, so I'm going down with on her and she starts to kind of like, you know, that where a girl will, you know, she'll kind of jump back. Like she's shivering and shaking and she's holding your head, but then she'll pull backwards. So every time she pulls backwards, I move up a step. Okay. 
So every time she kind of pulls backward and but she's holding on to my head like she's not like stop but she's she's going backwards and it's like you know you you stop you move you you change this you do that you know how to do it everybody knows what i'm talking about so she's leaning back she's leaning back now again like i said remember she's leaning back just her hair is on the landing and and i'm on the steps well as she's leaning back she's leaning back and now she's almost sitting straight up with her back against the landing and i'm still down between her legs and i'm up almost on the landing my knees are on the top step and she's got her feet on my shoulders and uh here's what i did folks uh i threw her legs over my shoulders and I grabbed her. I put my hands, because she was a small girl. And I, gra- I put her, my hands under her ass. And uh, I stood up. I walked up the steps holding her. She was, because she was against the wall. She's got her hair in her, and she's leaning against the wall. And I, I just, I never broke fucking stride. I, I held her in place, and I fucking walked up the steps. And I stood up with her against the wall. And uh, look, all right, I'm 6'2". So she's on my shoulder. She's fucking eight feet in the air getting worked. And, uh, and I looked up, I, you know, cause then I'm looking up and it's like, you try not to look up too often because the last thing you want is her looking down and seeing your eyes. Like, is this good? Is this working? Is this okay? Cause I got news for you. I know that it's good and I know that it's working and I know that it's okay. I'm only looking up. I'm not looking up for validation. I'm looking up so I'll remember that fucking face for the rest of my fucking life. Because she just slowly went up the wall and probably didn't even realize what was happening as I'm walking. She's holding my hair and she's shaking and shivering and I fucking, I stand up. I'm fully standing up and she looks down at me and I'm looking up at her and she looks up and she realizes she's fucking eight feet in the air. And uh, that was all she needed, folks. And, uh, and she just starts fucking shaking and, and pulling my fucking hair and I'm standing there. I'm just like, yeah, dude, this is the fuck. And now I, that, cause come on, let's face it <laughs> again, folks at that point, everybody gets a medal. <laughs> and, uh, and I just, I held her in place for, uh, you know, however long and you know, that whole thing where it's like, uh, you, you know what I'm talking about where it's, it's over, but you're still there. So, you, you know, you might snake a, a tongue or something like real quick, you know what I mean? Just to make them just do that shit and go. So there's, you know what you want? Because at, at that point, you want them to say no. All right. <laughs> at that point, they're all yesed out. So you want to get a couple of no's out of them. And uh, so I, I, I held her in place until she finished shaking, whatever. And she's looking down at me and just fucking hyperventilating and making the face like I am never going to forget that this happened. <laughs> And uh, so then I, I fucking, you know, pulled her down off the wall <laughs> and uh, and sat her down. And uh, and she just sat there and looked at me just like with this face and she just fucking shaking. And uh, again, because she's tiny girl, I'm fucking a giant. And uh, and I was like, so do you want to go upstairs? <laughs> and uh she goes, no, we, we, we can't go upstairs. <laughs> and uh, so there was some other things that took place on the landing. <laughs> and uh, she goes, I'll be right back. And she goes upstairs. And then I throw on, you know, shorts, whatever. And she comes down with like a blanket and a pillow. And she's like, you, you can sleep on the couch. You can crash on the couch. I said, oh, okay. Weird. Seems odd after what we've been through. Uh, but that's fine. I mean, you know. That's how Betty works it. <laughs> so uh, I lay down. I'm sleeping on the couch and I get dressed. Uh, in the morning, I'm, I'm laying on the couch and she's shaking me because I'm like, I'm, I got my face into the couch and she's shaking me and she's shaking me. And I'm just like, I'm like, oh, I go, what? She's shaking me and she's fighting. She's like shaking me awake. It's like, dude, you what are you doing here? I mean, all right, I'm sleeping. I, I understand it's time to wake up or whatever, but you can be nice about it. I always tell Karen that because I, I will tuck Karen into bed at night and I wake her up being very nice. I'm like, you know, I'm gentle. Like you'll, you'll rub someone's arm until they open their eyes, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but then I'll be asleep and Karen comes in. She goes, Michael, time to wake up. She just fucking shoves me. <laughs> but that's what this girl was doing. She's just fucking pushing me, like rocking me. You know what I mean? Like how you, you try to rock someone off of a fucking off the landing or rock a boat and she's pushing me and she pushes me and I go, what? And then she smacks me in the head, like smacks me on top of the head, like not hard, but just like doink. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I turn around and, uh, she's a four year old boy. 
Yeah, that's not Betty. <laughs> and he looks at me and he goes, Daddy? <laughs> and I said, Oh, no. <laughs> hey, little man. And he goes, Where's Daddy? And uh, I mean, I don't know what the fuck to say. I mean, I'm all mouth. But at that moment, it's not exactly working the way I want it to. I told I'll talk, I'll eat, and anything else you need. But talking to a four-year-old after I just fucking worked his mom, that's going to be a little rough. <laughs> all mouth or no all mouth. So uh, I didn't know what to say. But luckily, Betty comes out of the kitchen. And uh, she calls him. I'm not going to say his name. I don't want to give him. Why involve him? Uh, so Betty's like, no. She goes, you know, Daddy will be here uh, later today. Just come on. Let's go. And... Uh, <laughs> And I'm on the couch going, what the fuck? And uh, she goes into the kitchen. She comes out and she goes, I'm divorced. And she goes, he, he comes and picks him up on a Sunday sometimes. And I said, oh, okay. And uh, she goes, do you want breakfast? And I said, yeah. And she made uh, waffles, which seemed appropriate. And uh, it was great. I had breakfast with her and the kid. And then I got dropped off at the condo. And then had to listen to Gary Conrad talk about how he couldn't fucking nail any of the Hooters waitresses. I'm like, not even with your fucking, your mesmerizing talents? You couldn't, what would you do all night? And then they want every detail, of course. Whenever whenever they don't get laid, but you do, they want to hear fucking everything. It's like, nah, I don't think so. But that was the that move. I'm not going to tell them about my move. I can't tell that, you know. <laughs> then that gets out, and then Gary Conrad's doing my move. That move is the greatest. And now it's all fucking hung up. The first time I did it on Karen, oh man, I did that move on Karen, and she was just like, and just, ah, uh, dude, yeah. We were already married, uh, but uh, if we hadn't been married, I'm sure that would have sealed the deal at that point, basically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because every, it, it seemed like before we got married, every, we were always outside. There was no wall. You know what I mean? It was like, it was like everywhere else we could be. We were in a car or in somewhere else, but they, or in a hotel on the wall. Because like, you got to be careful with the move. You need a high ceiling, all right? <laughs> Because otherwise, you know, you're all mouth and you're going to work, but then somebody gets fucking brained. It's like, oh, no, that the whole move falls apart at that point. But now that's it. I'm done. I'm done with the move. I can't. I mean, I can still do the move, I guess, but on Karen. But, it, you know, it's not going to have the same power on Karen that it did before. She's already had the move done to her. So she knows what's coming with the move. All of a sudden, you know, that that's that moment when you're going up the wall and you don't really know what's happening because you're losing yourself in the moment. And then you look and you're like. Holy shit, I'm up, up fucking eight feet in the air. This is awesome. What's going on? And you look down on me and it's just like all oh, mouth. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's just, now I forget about it. It's, I got to retire my moves. That's it. I got to hang them up. They're retiring my number. <laughs> just gonna be, they're just going to hang a banner with a six and a half on it up in the corner. I have to give a speech. That's it. It's retiring my sex number. And I got it today, today, today. I am the unluckiest man, man, man in the entire world, world, world. Fuck. You guys can get me at Mike at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. You guys can get me at Facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy. You can be my, oh, that's where my friend is. My friend at Facebook, right? Did I say that? You can follow me at Twitter.com slash the 40 year old boy. You can follow our friend Lily Von Stupp at twitter.com slash Lily Von Stupp, or you can follow her at twitter.com slash MNTs. And if you want to write her a note and find out exactly how many minutes of the show we lost when the computer froze in the middle of this, you can go ahead and write her a personal note at lily at burlesque411.com. That's lily, L-I-L-I, at burlesque411.com. Zazzle.com slash 40-year-old boy. Please buy all his stuff. I want to remind you folks about the Monday night teas every Monday night at the three clubs on Santa Monica and Vine. Uh, it's been chaos <laughs> the last couple of weeks. Amazing shows, big crowds, people having a good time at the show. Lily Von Stupp is the producer of that show. Hello, Lily. Hi, Michael. You are producing this show this Monday as well, correct? I am. Is it a, a special theme show or is it a regular show? Fireworks. Fireworks. Oh, 4th of July. It's actually 4th of July. My yeah. club <laughs> yeah, every Monday. Know, yeah, every Monday. And they're like, well, it's 4th of July. We thought maybe you'd go away or something. Just confirming. <laughs> <laughs> nope, not me. I take my clothes off at 365, 24-7. <laughs> uh, well, good. That's good. So it's a fireworks uh, patriotic 4th yeah, of July type of show. Apple pies. And cool. Who's hosting? Baseball. Um, Scott Neary is hosting as Uncle Sam. 
Oh, that would be awesome. Well, he's tall. He's a skinny dude. He might look good as an Uncle Sam. Yeah, he's hysterical and funny and charming and wonderful, and I always love having him. I saw Scott. He does the uh, that is he does some escaping he does stuff. Escape, he does juggling he does stuff. Juggling, yeah. He does contortion. He does. Which is exactly whatever. what your show needs as the MC and the yeah. host. Because it keeps people entertained in between the acts. They don't want to just see me come out and talk about it. They don't want to see just regular comedy type people. They want to see that kind of variety stuff. So that's really cool. Uh, you should do a variety show somewhere in town. I should. Yeah, that would be fun. With the like, clowns. I wonder if people would go. They'd go to that. That'd be fun. Well, especially your crowd. Cirque du Soleil seems to be doing <laughs> Well, all right. Yeah, you're not doing Cirque du Soleil. Some dirty floored bar. That might work. Uh, we'll see. Uh no, you're not them. Years. You know what I meant. All right, so, so uh, the Monday Night Tees every Monday night at the three clubs on Santa Monica and Vine, 10 o'clock p.m. this week. It's fireworks, folks, if you're out for the 4th of July after the fireworks, because it starts at 10 o'clock. Come on over after dusk in your fireworks and uh, enjoy some lady fireworks with some, uh, you know, bursting nipples. I, I was trying to think of a... Some, One of my friends took a tagline that so pisses me off. It was red, white, and boobs. Oh, and I was like, dude. Oh, damn, that's perfect. That's great. You should have gone with, so go with head white and blue. Go with that instead. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that changes the entire tone of the show. No, we're not. Uh, let's call it that. I'll come in and do the move. <laughs> uh, but I want the move to work. That's the thing. See, like I said, because Karen's already had the move. She's going to look down at me. She's like, ah, this move again. That's the sort of thing. No, I'm, I'm going on the record here. <laughs> All saying, right. Yeah, that's a good move. It's not a bad move. So, but now I've put it out into the ether. So please take that move. But again, be careful. Uh, you gotta, you gotta take a look at your ceiling before you, because again, you don't want somebody to get sculled while doing the move. Somebody gets their fucking spine compressed. That's not a good move. Uh, <laughs> good story to tell the emergency room, though. Um, what happened to you? The move. Fucking Schmidt's move. Schmidt's uh, <laughs> move. Uh, all right. So remember, go to facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy and uh, be my friend there. Oh, and I got to mention, I would be remiss, folks, before we get into that, if I did not mention again, tiny.cc slash roach. That's where you want to go to learn all about the metaphor, metamorphosis short film starring Nick Searcy from Justified and, uh, and a roach, a guy who looks like a roach. And, uh, or you can go, like I said, to, Indiegogo.com slash metamorphosis and kick in some money to try and get this movie made from those guys. They have great ideas. It looks really cool. The, the special effects guy, I guess, is a big deal. My favorite part, again, watch the little five minute clip because it'll that'll creep you out. All right. If you if all my shit has been nonsense, I'm just doing I'm pointing you in the right direction so you can watch the five minute clip that sells you on exactly what they're doing. And uh, they go ahead and they talk and they tell you exactly what they're going to do. And it works out great. The only thing I will tell you is my favorite part is at the end. The director goes, see you on the set. I got a feeling after they listen to this podcast, I will not be allowed on the set. <laughs> because producer Jeffrey, who's won an Emmy, knows me and thinks I'm funny and knows what I do. I don't think director, executive producer, and writer have any idea who the fuck I am. And all they know is I've been kicking eight fucking tiny roach legs right into their balls the entire time. Uh, so go to facebook.com slash the 40-year-old boy, and I'll probably have the link to tiny.cc slash roach on my page and also go to indiegogo.com slash metamorphosis and if you guys can kick in some funding for them to make this film that would be great uh you can go and be my friend at facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy she's cutting out an uh and i said uh anyway how stupid i because i said a long uh and i paused and then i started over again and i said uh anyway this is this is what's the problem for poor lily who has to edit this goddamn show and cut out every uh and um that i wanted to cut out uh, but not sniffles, apparently. Um, they were honest. Uh, so what? Um, they were embarrassing. All right, so uh, if you go to facebook.com slash the 40-year-old boy, you can be my friend there. And you can be a friend of Lily Von Stupp or David Hernandez, who does all of the artwork for this show. And I can't wait to see this week's artwork. Because um, right now I haven't seen it. Because <laughs> the show's still in progress. Uh, remember that on the Facebook page, there are all the Bring Mike Schmidt 2 pages. Bring Mike Schmidt to Kansas City. Bring Mike Schmidt to Atlanta. Bring Mike Schmidt to Denver. Uh, I'm still working on Minneapolis and Indianapolis, as you know. I'm still trying to find venues. I had another venue in Minnesota this week, two more, that did not return a call for four days. Uh, one of them, their, their mailbox is full. I have a feeling they're done. 
uh, because their website is, they only have a Facebook page and has been updated since the early May. Uh, so I'm like, yeah, I don't know, whatever the hell. But everybody's still trying. People are great and they're sending me places and venues, which is really cool. So, uh, but I will remind you that July 8th, which is next week, I will be in Seattle at the Rendezvous Theater. Tickets are on sale at brownpapertickets.com. You can just search Mike Schmidt or search Success is Not an Option. You will find tickets there for Seattle. Uh, Seattle looked grim, and still, I'll be honest with you, the tickets are really super slow. Uh, but I want to go ahead here and say a, uh, a special thank you to Micah. And I don't know if Micah wants me to say his full name. Micah H. <laughs> he lives in Seattle, and uh, he heard what was going on. And uh, he basically donated my plane ticket. Uh, he goes, you have to come. Because I had, I had made some noise about maybe not coming. And, you know, because I, I pay for everything. I pay for my flight, hotel, uh, you know, the theater. I rent all of it and pay for it all myself. And that's why ticket sales, I... I kind of get a little hinky when they're not good uh, close to the show. And again, I don't mind breaking even. You know what I mean? As long as I can at least break even, I can still do these shows, get good at them, and eventually it will all work out for me in the long run. Um, but Seattle, just like Austin did, you know, with two weeks, Austin looked bad and then everybody rallied, which was great. Uh, you know, when I told people Austin was in trouble, I'd only sold 11 tickets. I then sold like 35 tickets in a week. Well, same thing with Seattle. It was, you know, we were down single digits. Well, I've sold some. We're we're still not where I want to be, but Micah stepped up and donated a certain amount of money that was ridiculous, and said, uh, "You have to come. I'm I'm coming to the show, so uh, you have to be here, please." And so I wanted to say a special thanks to him for for his donation and and uh, that cinched that I'll definitely be in Seattle. Uh, I can only hope that some other people will join Micah and I in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I know some people from Portland are coming up, which is great, and uh, and Mike is coming. So, uh, well, you know what? If anything, I might just we could play poker. Maybe we could just <laughs> we could sit around and I'll, instead of like doing an actual show, we can just talk. I'll regale you with tales. It'll be fun, and you you can all tell me stories of your life. How's that work? Why not buy tickets to do that? I'm an idiot. Uh, so tickets are on sale for Seattle, July eighth. Also, hey Philadelphia, it's time we talk to you now uh, because uh, tickets are selling. Uh, but you know, obviously I would like to sell tickets. So I have an idea, particularly because the airfare to Seattle is almost double what it is. I'm sorry. The airfare to Philadelphia is almost double what it is to Seattle. Uh, and I tried to, it was funny. I tried to use my miles, my American airlines miles. Ooh, I'm a little short. Uh, they want 50,000 miles to get a free ticket to Philadelphia. So, uh, tickets are selling and I appreciate it. I'm going to, I'm excited to be there July 29th at the plays and players theater in Philadelphia. Uh, but you know, that's a month out. And if we could buy some tickets and give me an idea about how things are going to work out there and that you're all going to be joining me, that'd be fantastic. I'd appreciate it. So Seattle, July 8th, Philadelphia, July 29th. And, uh, folks, let me tell you about a little town called New York, New York, big city of dreams, but everything in New York ain't always what it seems folks. You might get fooled if you come from out of town, but I'm down by law and I know my way around to the Producers Club Theater, August 12th. That's right. I will be in New York City, folks, August 12th at the Producers Club Theater. There's several theaters in there. I will tell you that we are in the Crown Theater of the Producers Club Theater Complex. Tickets are on sale at brownpapertickets.com. Mike Schmidt in New York, New York City. Get a rope. Uh, August 12th, that was just booked by my friend David Williams. We had the venue for a while. We were just waiting to hear from them regarding a date, and now there's the date. August 12th, the Producers Club Crown Theater in New York. Ladies and gentlemen, go to brownpapertickets.com for information regarding tickets to Seattle, Philadelphia, or now New York. Or all three, if you're a jet setter who wants to see me all over the place and tell the same goddamn stories back and forth. Uh, so that's cool. New York is booked. I'm excited. And uh, you keep making a face. You're shaking your head. What's going on? You have doubts? I really wanted to go to New York, and I can't go that weekend. Why can't you go? Business? I, you got business? I do. I'm actually going to be somewhere else. <laughs> well, that would make sense. If you couldn't be there, then that would make sense. I'm not either, so I mean it's fine. Right. Well, that's fine. All right, so New York's August 12th. That's fine. Well, when we go to, uh, well, you said you're in for London, if that ever happens. London, yeah. Me, you, and Karen on a plane i love that and uh also there's a, a toronto guy who has not started a page but he wrote me and he's looking for venues 
And uh, from my understanding, also they're looking for venues in Winnipeg. My friend Sandra mentioned it. Uh, but I, that's Sandra from the Return to Sender podcast with Michael M. Michaels and Sandra D. Sanchez. Uh, they said they'd be looking for a theater. Although if they find me a theater, I'm going to have to share it with some roller derby activity. <laughs> like, literally, they always got something going on where they're like, hey, we're on lesbian radio and we know roller derby friends. You know what I mean? I'm like, great. I, you know, I don't want to share the theater with any of these people. Come on. Michael's like, hey, I'm going to do a rap set before you. Uh huh, Michael, no. Some parody song about Sandra's vagina. Uh, <laughs> so who knows about those places? But New York, Philadelphia, Seattle tickets are now on sale. Go ahead and check those out at uh, brownpapertickets.com. Be my friend at facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy. Join the West Side Jokers uh, 86 Jokers fan club. There's going to be a page. I talked to Adam about it, about one full page with all the links to all of the, the places. I haven't talked to him to finalize it, but it should be very soon. So I'm excited about that. And, uh, what else? There was something else on Facebook, right? Wasn't there? I had to tell people about one other thing there. No? Oh, Zazzle. I, I'll tell you this. There's a Zazzle.com store. Uh, you can get to the link. If you go to MikeSchmidt.comedy.com, go to the Joe Business page, there's a link to the Zazzle store. Well, I will tell you this. This is official. Uh, this is your last day uh, today. What's today? The 29th? Tomorrow's the 30th? As of July 1st, the Stripple shirt and the Hanjabaga shirt will be gone from the Zazzle store. And the reason is they've raised the prices on shirts. Uh, so it's not me. It was Zazzle. They said something about apparel costs. I have it in front of me. They got some chart, but, uh, basically every shirt's going to get kicked up three bucks. And, uh, for the return that I get on them compared to what they wind up taking from them, it doesn't make any sense to me to do that to you people. So to raise prices on shirts, I don't want to do that. I want to sell them for what I want to sell them for. And if I sell them for what I want to sell them for, I'm going to get four cents a shirt. So no offense to you folks. Last day to get a stripple shirt, last day to get a hand job, a shirt. They will be there, uh, today, Thursday, and then they're gone Friday, July 1st. Uh, the day of change. Everything changes. I know your struggle shirt has been retired. Well, the, the design's not retired. It's just Ed Zazzle is retired. We'll hopefully someday be able to produce them, mass produce them, in our Korean t-shirt factory that you and I are going to buy. Uh, <laughs> it's on the agenda. Once, once the tour takes off, we'll buy a Korean t-shirt factory. That'd be fantastic. Uh, so go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com and go to the Joe Business page. There's the link, of course, to Zazzle.com, as I've mentioned. There's a link to TweakedAudio.com slash 40, where you can, uh, all the entire month of July, we have a deal. You, you go ahead and donate $20 to the show, you will get a cock ring watch. Donate $40 to the show, you will get a set of earbuds. If you donate $50 to the show, you get a cock ring watch and earbuds. The anti-premature ejaculation kit, it's right there for you. If you donate oh, $50 or over, I'll go ahead and throw in or over. But don't try to parcel it out if you go, hey, I gave 70, so I get uh, an extra cock ring watch. No, just 50 or over, uh, which was weird then because then 20 to 40, should it be? I don't know. It's stupid. So if you do, I'm not doing the math for you folks. <laughs> just make a donation to the show. Uh, and if you want to donate to the show, like I said, if uh, you want to go to Tweaked Audio and just buy earbuds, that's fine. That's what that link is for. But in the upper left-hand corner of every single page of MikeSchmidtComedy.com, there is a little Schmitty on there, and you can click on him and either donate to the show and get the aforementioned prizes. Uh, or you can set up a subscription to the show where you will set up a uh, $2 subscription a month, $5 a month, or $10 a month. You can still make the one-time donation, as I've mentioned, and that will be in play for all of July. Uh, and make a one-time donation, and I will mention you on the show. That'll be people like Paul Dambra. My good friend Paul Dambra, from, that's South Philly Paul, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, uh, I'm going to be doing his uh, podcast, the South Philly Paul cast, coming up soon. A uh, couple of weeks, I think. And he's, he's got some cockamamie thing fucking cooked up for it. I'm like, dude, I just talk. And he's like, no, it's, it'll be great. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> it's your show. We'll see how it goes. Uh, so I'll be on the South Philly podcast in a couple of weeks. Not yet. I mean, go listen to them still. But, uh, uh, but you know, I won't be on for a while. Uh, I'm not on any podcast. I have no plug, no podcast plug this week. Amazing, right? Although I will throw this out into the world. I want to do a sports podcast with somebody. Would somebody out there who has a sports podcast that's funny have me on, please? <laughs> Just because I thought about it, I was listening to, uh, there's a podcast Steve Gorman does, and it's like they talk about sports, but they're kind of funny. Bill Burr was on, and uh, I'm like, man, I, th I like this. This is pretty cool. It'd be fun. Uh, also, donating to the show, Maxwell S. Donated to the show. And uh, also... Just after Maxwell S. sent a donation, just two hours later, Maxwell S. sent a donation. He donated a, the same amount. Like, uh, he donated, and then two hours later, he sent the same donation, same exact amount. So I wrote him, and I go, hey, uh, 
you know you donated twice. Like, are you, because this was during the yearbook promotion, are you trying to get two sets of earbuds? If that's true, that's fine. But, uh, you know, otherwise, you know, you let me know what's happening. And he writes me, he goes, I didn't mean to donate twice, but just go ahead and hang on to it. That's cool. Uh, so Maxwell S., very cool of him to donate twice in two hours, same amount. And then, and he's like, no, nah, it's okay. I don't need two sets of earbuds. And I go, well, it's okay. We'll get them to you. And then Tweak took care of him, which was great. Thank you so much, Maxwell S., for a couple of those. And Paul Dambra for your, uh, your donation. Thank you so much. And I'll look forward to doing the South Philly podcast. I don't know what's going to happen, but that's your house of cards. <laughs> However, it falls is on you. Uh, and, uh, oh, and don't forget to follow me at twitter.com slash the 40 year old boy. I've been getting a lot of Twitter followers lately. Weird. Yeah. Like, uh, and also, you know, corporations who just follow you back and forth, but then also real people all of a sudden, I think they're finding me through geo, uh, the get it on podcast that I did. And, uh, maybe Caleb's podcast. I don't know. You get out there and all of a sudden I just started to get people following me, which is strange. But then, uh, I had some porn star follow me and I was like, oh yeah, there we go here. The business is about to pick up. Uh, and then I realized who I was. <laughs> I had to stop. Um, but the, I, I, you know, I, I'm always amazed because I was talking to my buddy Chip, my buddy Chip uh, Chinnery. He's at chipsmoneytips.com. Uh, he's he wrote me a thing about Twitter, and he's he's using it, and he's like, "How do you do it? And what do you do?" And uh, because I'm a, I'm just fascinated by the power of it. You know what I mean by Twitter and 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 Facebook and how it can work for you and how it can fucking work against you, and it works against fucking society. Did you see the story about the like all the people showing up? Like, if you leave a, a an, or if some people are putting events on Facebook and leaving them unlocked, so then like 150 people are showing up at like a four year old girl's birthday party. Like, it's a joke. They do it as a goof. But then, of course, you get 150 people in one spot, and inevitably something fucking terrible is going to happen. You know, I just read some story. There, there's these. They're you know they're calling them flash mobs. But I mean, flash mobs used to be a different thing where everybody said, hey, tomorrow we're all meeting here for a fun, you know, we're all going to dance in public and take our picture because we're stupid. But now flash mobs have realized the evil part of the Internet, which is great. I just read some story. There's teenage robbery mobs in Philadelphia and Chicago. And uh, and when I heard about what they're doing in Chicago, they hang out at the Miracle Mile and they there'll be a group of like 15 teenagers and they'll walk together and they just run like into a Walgreens and just start grabbing everything and throwing it in bags and then they run out. Like they're smash and grab robberies that are organized via the internet by these people, these like-minded... Dude, once the criminals start to learn how to use something, you are <laughs> fucked. It's like I always just say, you know, because porn is the... They advance like the most technology. They come through, like I said, about, you know, all the intercoms and fucking... They're the early adapters of everything. And now the criminals are starting to be the adapters of it. And it's like, man, we are in a lot of... Dude, if the porn people team up with the criminals, we are in a lot of fucking trouble. <laughs> That's going to be fucking terrible. But there's in Philadelphia, these robbery mobs, they just show up in the street. They're calling them flash... And they just run down punching people. Like a, uh, That's not a flash mob. That's a punch mob. That's a bunch of... That's just a bunch of assholes who decided, hey, you know what? We're going to go and do something stupid. And it, you know what? As a kid, I recognize the complete appeal in that. I can't. All I can do is hope to stay out of their fucking way. It's just a, if, you, if you're walking down the street and you see a human wave pool come at you, just duck into a doorway and try not to get fucking jacked. <laughs> stupid enough to think that when people listen to me and they listen to the show, they should take my honesty and go, oh, wow, how refreshing his, his unvarnished honesty is. And uh, the fact that he's willing to have a scorched earth policy and have no friends or no fucking future is so refreshing and great. But then they'll say to me, hey, do you need somebody raped for the steak? I go, yes, I do. Done. They'll take care of it for me. Thanks, snake rape. 
all. No one listens to show, bro. Wonder why. Wonder why no one listens to show, bro. I don't want to listen to show, bro. Please. Do it! Do it! Do it! Do it! Do it!